going to have uh, seating in the west end zone. Again, as we told you earlier, this uh, stadium runs east and west. The field does. And uh, it won't be a very big crowd, especially over the far side of the student section. We have a few more of the season ticket holders and alumni types on this side. And the Aggie seating is to our right, and there's a small corner uh, on the uh, far side. All right, we're getting it underway. Here is Cody Skates, and he will kick one that will be taken by Terrence Davis Bryant at about the 15-yard line, and he will run it up, picked it up at the 10, and ran it out to about the 27-yard line. So it was a kind of a sidewinder, low kick off the uh, foot of Cody Skates, and the Cowboys now will set up shop for a uh, first possession of the ball game at first. First down and 10 at their own 27-yard line. Gerard Penwright is in the lineup. Roy Lynn play today. He has a separated elbow, and that's going to probably allow him to sit on the bench for as much time as possible. Also, Poe Guy will open up at the quarterback position. His center is John Vandrell, a junior out of the state of Oklahoma. Out of the shotgun, play action, looking to throw. He will. Goes in the flats and sliding and making the catch for a one-yard gain. Will be the tight end, Brian Blackwood. He went left, and he caught the ball at the 28 and went down immediately. It'll be second down and nine coming up. There on the spot was Gerard Penwright, the sophomore out of Aldine Eisenhower. But, again, Blackwood went down, Dave, on his own. Dave, another change in the starting lineup. Wes Bodovich is in at safety. Terrence Keel did not start the game. In addition to a pulled uh, uh, groin muscle from last week, he cut his leg on his bed in his dorm room and had a few stitches. And so he did not start the game. We've got a flag on the field. And it looks like it will go against Oklahoma State. Illegal substitution. They broke the huddle, and they had too many men on the huddle. Shotgun running back to the right. They have trips lined up one behind the other on the right side. Running back is Reggie White. He goes right to left, and it will be a keeper by Poe Guy, and he is hit as he gets to the line of scrimmage and knocked down after a one-yard gain to the 24-yard line. Hit and knocked down by Brian Gamble. So Gamble stayed home, and on the quarterback draw, they'll get Third down and 13 coming up. We're just underway in this ball game with 13.35 to go in the first quarter. No score. Well, Gamble didn't just stay home. He broke down uh, Poe Guy's door and went in his home. He just he hit him right in the middle of the hole. No game. That'll be his 82nd tackle of the season. He is number one in tackling on this ball club. Here's the third down play. Shotgun running back left. Trips to the right. Poe Guy dropping back. Now rolling this way. Still looking down the field. Time to throw. Now he's going to run with the football. Caught from the backside and they'll Drag him down at the 31-yard line. Not enough for the first down. It was Gerard Penwright who chased him all the way to this side of the field. That play started at the left hash mark. Now they ran a loop in the uh, defensive line, and one of the linemen Eight came clean four, yeah. and forced Poe Guy to roll to his right. And great coverage downfield. A lot of time to look for a receiver, but great coverage by the A&M secondary. And finally, Penwright catches him from behind. They'll be forced to punt here on their first series. Fourth down and about five. The line of scrimmage is the 31 and a half. Taylor for the Aggies. The punt return man is standing at the AM 30. Elder, their junior punter. High kick, and it's not going to be that deep. And look out, guys. It's going to take an Aggie bounce. We had a coverage man down there. I thought he was going to run into the ball. It's going to be killed at the Aggie 43-yard line. So with the 43, A&M will set up shop for the first time today. First down and 10. It was 1, 2, 3, and punt, including a penalty against Oklahoma State on their first possession. And that kick into a very light win, Dave, by Elder was only 25 yards. Well, it gives the Aggies great field position to start here. And the Aggies are come out on the field and are ready to go. And Oklahoma State is just now breaking the huddle. Let's see if they come with the pressure that uh, the that Steve Craigthorpe expects. Whitaker will be the lone set back, and Ferris is under center. We put Goins in motion, run the option. It is Ferris jumping over a pile up at the 45, diving out to the Aggie 48-yard line. That was first down and 10 from about the 45-yard line. So he picks up three yards. It'll be second down and seven. We have no score in the game. A&M's first possession. First quarter action, we're counting it down to the 12-minute mark. Dwayne Levels, their number one tackler, made that stop. And that's the speed option to open the ball game. Just open up to the right side and run the option, and Ferris will pick up about three yards. Empty in the backfield right now for Texas A&M. Three wides on the left, two on the right. Line of scrimmage to 48 on second down and seven. Ferris in the shotgun. 
Has the snap. Drops back to the 40. Has time. Throws out this way. Caught by Bethel. Jukes the first two men that close on him. Gets by those two. And then a third will close on him at the 48-yard line on the OSU side of the 50. Dwayne Levels again. Came in to make the stop. One of their lines. The Aggies will pick up uh, about three or four yards on that one. So going to face third down, and a long two will be coming up at the OSU 48. And the Aggies went with a flood to the left side, picked the short man, and uh, he'll only pick up about four. And this third down play, the first third down of the game. Running back to the left of Ferris, two wides left, two uh, to the right. That's a slot on the right, the open side. Has the snap, drops back, throws, caught by. Gets it across the 45, down to the OSU 40-yard line. Porter makes the catch, and he's punished as he gets down to the 40. That will be his 12th catch. 10, the Aggies, 10.57 to go on the first. No score, a ms first possession. Well, this is just a quick crossing. And uh, Ferris hit him very, very quickly, and he was able to pick up the first down and then some. Oklahoma State so far not coming with the pressure. That time only a three-man rush. First out and 10, a hash to the right. And for the first time today, we'll have a couple of running backs. This is offset. Two wides on the right side. Now we've put Ferguson in motion. Line of scrimmage, the OSU 40. They're going to throw it to Ferguson out the flats. Caught the ball at the line of scrimmage. Gets five out of this. Tripped up, fell forward to the 35-yard line. It'll be second down and five coming. Michael Cooper, a junior out of Oklahoma. 5'10", 180, a cornerback. Their number nine tackler made the stop. Ferguson has great speed, but he's also got great strength, good hands, good moves in the open field. they got to find more ways to get him the football. That time it was just a quick one out in the flat and let him do his thing. He picks up five. Number three receiver in the Big 12. That was his 40th catch of the season. Second down and five. Goins in motion. Going left to right. There's the snap. Hand off to Toombs. Toombs hit at the line of scrimmage. Bounces off the first man. Won't bounce off the second, third, and fourth. And he got about a half a yard. So now the Aggies will face a third down, four and a half coming up. Jaquay Thomas, a senior out of Houston Aldi, who's a junior college transfer, ended up uh, leading the tackling on that ball club. They make a couple of changes right now, bringing Ricklin Holmes into the lineup along with Marcus Jones. So A&M third down. And we'll call it five. They've got to get to the OSU 30 for a first down. Third there go down Bethel, Johnson, and Ferguson to the right side. Here on the left side will be Taylor and Porter. Porter is a split in. Running back to the left of Ferris out of the shotgun. Has the snap. Waits now throws. And he threw behind the intended receiver, Bethel Johnson. And the defensive back, Michael Cooper, really jawing. And Johnson threw it behind him incomplete down around the OSU 25, maybe the 20-yard line. Tried to hit the uh, quick slant and uh, just nothing there. The safety had stayed home and uh, had coverage on the inside. The corner had him outside. Ball was thrown behind him, and it'll bring up this first punt for the Aggies. Cody Skates into the lineup. Has times with a 40-yard-plus average this season, and he's kicked this one. Trying to get it to this sideline. The Aggies have a man down there, and he just tipped the ball at the one, and they're going to kill it at the five. Tipping the ball back out to the five-yard line for Texas A&M, Jonte Buell. He kicked it from the one back to the five. That's going to end up being a 30-yard punch. And we'll get a timeout down on the field with no score. Both teams having touched the ball now at the 9.08 mark here in the first quarter. No score between Texas A&M and Oklahoma State. OSU's ball at their own five and a half when we come back. Out of a first down and five formation, they ran from an eye and put the fullback in motion. Going left to right, handoff to Reggie White. White will carry for a yard. Oklahoma State touching the ball for the second time. It'll be second down and nine. We have 8.53 to go in the first quarter. No score. Texas A&M on defense and the Cowboys with the football. They'll check in Rashawn Woods with the play. And out of the lineup will go Tim Burrow, the fullback. So now second down and nine. Hash right for Oklahoma State. They went one, two, three, and punts on their first possession. Single setback. Got a man offset here on the right side. Two wides on this side. The handoff again to the tailback. And he'll cross the 10 and get out to the 14-yard line. Reggie White into the ball game today. 704 yards for the season. Averaging just over 100 per ball game. Not enough for a first down. He'll end up shy on that one by about two yards as Bonovich came in to make the stop. And working behind that huge offensive line, he found a crease off right tackle, got through it quickly and picked up about uh, eight third yards. This is going to be a third and a long one. 
Line of scrimmage just past the OSU 14. They need their 16-yard line. Pole guy will go under center. Eye formation behind him. Handoff goes to the fullback, and Bora is hit, but he got a Give first down as he'll carry to the, 40, Tim Burrow. out to the 17. Gain of three, good for a count. Almost the 18-yard line, so a first ten. down and 10 for OSU. They get their first first down on their second possession. This broadcast brought to you in part by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. No score in the ball game. 7.43 to go in the first quarter. Oklahoma State and Texas A&M Cowboys with a football. Shotgun for Pogai. Redshirt freshman quarterback out of Lawton, Oklahoma. He'll take the snap standing at his own 12. Has it in the inside handoff and a nice gainer here. 25-30 across the 30 to the 33-yard line will go Tatum Bell, the backup tailback. Has 22 carries and 86 yards into the game. He just picked up 15. It's a first down for Oklahoma State. Well, Oklahoma State is, has not thrown the football in this particular series. Uh, they started deep in their own territory down at their 5, and they've kept it on the ground and moved it out to the 33. That time a quick hitter to Tatum Bell, and he... Uh, was untouched until he got to about the 30-yard line. High school All-American, 190, a freshman out of DeSoto. Who again, had 86 yards rushing coming into the game today on 22 carries. They'll move the running back left to right. That's why the Aggies are coming up the middle. They're going to throw a screen out here, and it's going to be thrown behind the line, making the catch at the 30, was in a reception at the 30-yard line. Pass complete. Terrence Davis Bryant, Bryant caught the ball. That will be his 18th reception of the season. That turns up being a loss of about three. So second down to 13. They've got to get the ball out to their own 43 for a first down. Well, those are the kind of completions that you like to see are from a defensive standpoint. They, they complete the football, but they lose three yards. It'll bring up second and 13. Out of the lineup comes uh, Brian Blackwood, a uh, tight end. He's a senior at 6'5", 255 pounds. Three wides on the right, one to the left. They got two in the slot here on the right side. Running back to the left of Pogai. Play will be run from a shotgun. Now he's moving his running back left to right. I think they're going to have to call a timeout. They were running out a 25-second clock. So timeout called by OSU facing third down and 13. When we come back, it'll be second down and 13 when we come back. Cowboys with the football at their own 30 facing a second down and 13. They need the 43-yard line for a first down. Shotgun, three wides, two in the slot on the right side. Running back to the left of Pogai as the snap throws out in the flats. Caught behind the line at the 25. That'll be White again, and White will get back to the 30. Caught it at the 25 behind the line of scrimmage. Now third down on that same 13 coming up. Bonovich and Harold Robertson quickly closed in on White, who comes into the ball game today with nine receptions. Now he is double figures at 10. Well, they had a, a, a good screen set up here, but uh, Wes Bodovich read this thing so well uh, early before they threw the football, got around the screen blockers, and was able to make the tackle before it could develop, and it'll get no gain. Whole guy getting his third start today has completed 55.9% of his passes. they got about a yard, they say now, so it's third down and 12 at their own 31. They need the 43. Drops back, sets up. Now he throws over the middle. The tight end will make the catch. He'll get about okay, three yards out of that. They'll give him the 35-yard line, so he picked up four. And now fourth down after Brian Blackwood caught the ball at the OSU 35. They will punt. But that's one of those catches that you'll gladly give up on defense. Third and 12 and they complete a four-yard pass, and he stopped immediately. This will force a punt from their own 35-yard line. They are now one out of three on third downs early in this ball game. The clock just went under five minutes. Taylor will stand back at his own 30. The first punt from Elder, the junior for Louisiana, was only 25 yards. Takes the snap, outside pressure, kicks away. It's a boomer. Here's Taylor backing up. He's waiting on it at the 15. They close on him, spun away from the first two men, and now tackle from the backside at the 19. Caught the ball at the 15-yard line and got it back to the 19. Aggies will have it after a 50-yard punt, so he doubled what he had the first time. Elder, 25 on the first kick. Gets 50 here. And back to the 19 it goes. It'll be first down and 10 for Texas A&M following the Chris Taylor return. That went uh, for about four yards. 
That was a good job by Taylor. He, at least he, he was able to catch it and, and break a couple of tackles. The two initial cover men, he bounced off of those and was able to get it back in decent field position at the 20 yard, almost the 20 yard line. We have 4.38 to go here in the first quarter, and there's no score between Texas A&M and Oklahoma State. I formation, Ferris under center. Line of scrimmage is about the 19 and a half, the official spot. But a man in motion, that was Ferguson. Now roll to the right after the snap. Throw it. Ferguson caught the ball and out of bounds immediately at the 31 yard line. First and 10, Texas A&M. Clock stops at 4.32 to go on the first. No score. Aggies now with a first down on their first play of this possession. Well, the Aggies flexed Lonnie Madison as a tight end out on the left side, and Ferguson lined up inside of him, went in motion, just went up the field, ran an, an out pattern at about 12 yards, just a loft pass from Mark Ferris right on the money, and it's a first down for the Aggies. Aggies come into the game today averaging 155 rushing and 229 passing, 384 in total O, which is 48th in the nation. Three wides on the left, one on the right, running back to the left. We had movement and flags before the snap of the ball. We moved here on the left this side of the offensive line. line. I think it might have been Tango McCauley. I think he's, he's not too far from home today as McCauley. I don't know if he was a man that moved or not, but he had his out of Oklahoma City Marshall. So here comes Ferguson wide to the left side. Single running back will be Whitaker behind Ferris, who is under center. He's got a slot on the right, tight end left. Slot man's in motion, going left to right. And oh, that's an end around back to Goins, and it's wide open. He's got 10. He's got about 15 yards and a first down. Out of bounds he goes with the 45. Goins went in motion left to right, and then uh, right to left, actually, then came back behind Ferris and took it to the far sideline, all the way out to the Aggie, 45-yard line. 4.23 to go in the first quarter. No score. The Aggies first and 10 at their 45. Boy, clever ball handling by Mark Ferris. He faked to the tailback uh, Whitaker and then handed it off to Goins and carried out his own fake. And I really think that the defense for Oklahoma State lost the ball. This one picks up 19 yards. And for uh, Goins now, that will be his seventh run of the season. Here is a batted ball up in the air, and uh, that came close to being intercepted. So incomplete, and a deflection that time by Jaquay Thomas. It'll be second down and 10. The ball spotted at the Aggie 46-yard line. Now trying to get the quick out to Robert Ferguson. And uh, it was there. It just got knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Uh, Ferris uh, didn't have enough height on the ball. Jaquay got up and uh, knocked it back at him. A&M breaks the huddle, comes to the line. Here's Taylor coming this way. Ferguson's going the other way. The tight end is on the right side of the formation. Tight end Lonnie Madison splits out to the right, and now Ferguson goes in motion left or rather right to left. And they uh, draw and a delay out of the backfield to Whitaker, and Whitaker got back to the line of scrimmage, and they were all over that. Dwayne Levels, junior out of Richardson, Texas, a red shirt for the uh, Cowboys in 97, wrapped him up, no gain, and now third down at about 10. Well, this one didn't go for any game, but I was watching uh, out on the corners. Boy, these uh, the defensive for Oklahoma State are really doing a lot of mouthing, uh, particular, particularly Michael Cooper, the cornerback on this side, and he'll be lined up now against Robert Ferguson. Wides to the left, one to the right, third down and ten. The Aggies at their own 40. They need the OSU 44. Shotgun for Ferris has the snap, and we got to delay a game. Now, Ferris is trying to hurry up Seth McKinney, but uh, he was about as getting him the ball. 3.34 to go in the first, no score. A&M with a shotgun. Three wides to the left, one to the right. Running back to the left of Ferris. Has the snap, drops back under. It'll be caught first down across the 40, all the way down to the 37-yard line. It was Bethel Johnson. Chris Massey gave him a great leg, but Johnson will hang on. First and 10 A&M, 17-yard gainer on the pass and the uh, catch to Bethel Johnson. I continue to marvel at Mark Ferris. Uh, he saw the blitz coming, and it came up the middle. He had to get rid of it quickly. He caught that slant pattern. He saw the slant pattern open, delivered the ball perfectly to Bethel, and kept the drive alive inside Oklahoma State territory. Two out of three on third down conversions early on. First down and ten. Three ten to go in the first quarter. No score. Ba a handoff this time will go to Toombs. Breaks out 30. He's down to the 25. Stumbles and they'll bring him down at the 
24-yard line. First and 10 A&M, Chris Massey again saves the touchdown by getting Toombs down low around the ankles. Uh, Toombs just uh, continues where he left off last week. He gets stopped now and then, but uh, he never gives up his effort. And that time he broke a couple of tackles initially as he was hit at the line of scrimmage and just kept right on going. He became a nightmare in the uh, secondary of Oklahoma State, and he'll pick up another first down. They bring out a new defensive end, Whalen Brown now playing for Oklahoma State, 280-pound sophomore out of White House, Texas. Under center is Ferris on first and 10 at the 24. Handoff will go to Toombs. He has about two spins. Got another yard on the spin to the 22-yard line. And the line of scrimmage at the 24, so he got two yards. First down uh, and 10, now it converts to second down and eight coming up. Clock showing 2.23 to go in the first quarter. And no score between Texas A&M and Oklahoma State. Aggies with the football. Checking out of the ball game now will be Michael Mahan. That normally means that uh, they'll bring in Andre Brooks on that right side, and that indeed is the case. Lonnie Madison's the tie it in. He's in close on the left side of the formation. Single setback. Matter of fact, two tights, and they play action play. Now here is a throw forward, and it is an incomplete pass as we had Ferris under a lot of pressure. He was hit as he was throwing the football, and he got rid of the football rather than take the sack. So on a second down and eight, it will be third down and eight. And it was Terrence Robinson that got through and smacked Ferris, and a heads-up play by Ferris to get rid of the football to avoid the sack. Well, two tight ends and two wide receivers, and uh, there was nobody to block the blitzer. And Ferris turned around with a rolling pocket to the left and saw him in his face, and he was he was very quick in getting rid of that ball. Lonnie Madison was it was in the vicinity. Oklahoma State's going to call a timeout here with the Aggies facing third down and eight. And after the OSU timeout, they're coming to the line, and the Aggies will run the play out of a shotgun. Ferris is going up and saying something to his center, Seth McKinney. Running back to his left, slot to the uh, left. Tied in on the right, flanker right. Has the snap, drops back, throws, caught. First down on the sideline. Ferguson juke the first man, can't juke the second. And a first down at the 12-yard line. About the 11 and a half. Michael Cooper finally closed on Ferguson. And I guess, Dave, that's probably what his third reception of the day for Ferguson. First and 10, the Aggies. Well, as we said in the playbook, I expect Ferguson to have a big day. He's just such a good athlete. Uh, they've got to get him the football, and they're doing a good job of doing that. That time, Bethel Johnson did a great job of clearing out the zone went into the end zone, took the corner with him, and Ferguson ran the out. Perfect throw from Ferris. It keeps the drive alive. 149 to go in the first. No score. The Aggies have the ball first and 10 at the OSU 11. Time to throw. Well, it's going to be caught by Ferguson. Broke a tackle as he goes across the five and then fumble the football. And is there going to be a fumble or not? There is confusion over on the sideline, and I'm still waiting for the officials to say whether or not he was down or not. There was a big tussle for the football. The Aggies are over there. Oklahoma State's pointing the other way. Now John Laurie, the referee, is talking to his crew members, and it's a fumble by Ferguson inside the five at the two-yard line. The Cowboys get it back, and a promising drive comes to an end, and Ferguson still standing over there talking to the official. Now we're going to get a chance to look at it on instant replay here in the stadium, and we can see what, uh, what might have happened. Well, it's kind of hard for that tell. camera angle. Yeah, you just couldn't tell. But uh, the officials have ruled that it is a fumble, and Oklahoma State will take over on their own, too. Saw the drive on a fumble. The first turnover of the day gives the ball to Oklahoma State. First and 10 at their own, two. 139 to go in the first quarter. There's no score. Two wides to the right, one to the left. Single set back, lines up in the backfield. Now comes up to get the message here from Pogai on the play. And they snap the ball, and they'll throw. It's going to be caught at the four and tackled at the four-yard line. Right off the line of scrimmage came... That was Blackwood, I believe, who made the, uh, that was Woods. Woods made the reception, and the Aggies will tackle him at the four-yard line. It was Lennis Smith off the defensive line that made that stuff. Yeah, just barely got this play off. Uh, they almost had the play clock run out. Uh, 
<laughs> it was just under one second when they snapped the ball, but they'll pick up three on that first play. Got to get the ball out to their 12. It's second down. Scoreboard says seven at their own five-yard line. They had motion. They hand off. They go up the middle. Big hole across the 15 out to about the 18-yard line on the handoff to Reggie White. First down at the 19 for Oklahoma State. They get it away from the two and bust out to the 19-yard line. Clock shows 101 to go in the first quarter and no score. Oklahoma State with a football. Uh, Dave, they're going to take some of this back. They're going to get a 15-yard penalty for a real late hit. Uh, Josh Lynn, the uh, offensive tackle, downfield took a cheap shot at Jay Brooks, knocked him on his backside, but it's going to go against Oklahoma State. First down. And first down and 10 with exactly one minute to go in this first quarter and no score. Single setback. Poe guy will hand off to that man wide again. He is wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Trying to take it outside to the left and wrapped up and dropped down by Lennis Smith. So a couple of tackles here with Lennis Smith playing in that defensive front right now. The freshman from Tyler, John Tyler, who has nine tackles into the ball game today. Second down and they moved it about a half yard. So we'll Call it second down to nine. Lennon Smith appears to fit that mold of the uh, Aggie defensive lineman. Very second mobile, down. and he moved down the line extremely well to his right and made this tackle. Shotgun, three wides on the right, one to the left. The tight end is on the left side of the formation. Pole guy drops back. Now he throws. Tapped up and almost intercepted by AM and at the 20. Okay. Tapped up in the air and tapped away from the intended receiver, the tight end, Kari Jackson. And three Aggies were closing on the ball, but it goes incomplete. Yeah, three different Aggies got a piece of this one, and none of them could pull it down. Uh, I couldn't tell who knocked it up first. It looked like Robertson first. Jamison was involved there, and I think Jay Brooks all had a, had a chance to, to get a hand on this ball, but none of them could bring it in. Sammy Davis also came in to play on uh, that pass. Now it is a third down and nine at their own 10. They need their 19. Out of the shotgun, has the snap. Now he's being chased back into his own end zone. Throws high over the intended receiver's head about the 14-yard line, trying to get it to Reggie White. He was being chased from the backside by Brian Gamble. Incomplete. Fourth down coming up, and a punt again for OSU. Now the first guy in there that that broke him out of the pocket, that flushed him, was uh, Gerard Penwright with a great bull rush over to the right side. Broke uh, broke between the two of the offensive linemen and flushed him out of the pocket and got him on the run. And and then the incomplete pass, and the Aggies will get it via the punt. 12 seconds to go in the first quarter, and there's no score between Texas A&M and Oklahoma State. The return men standing at the 50. Up on the top, Chris Taylor here on the left hash mark is Mickey Jones. Taylor coming into the ball game today. 15 punt returns. Here's the kick. Nice high spiral calling for it on a fair catch will be Chris Taylor and a flag goes down at the spot where he caught okay. the ball at the 46 yard line there may be a push in the back against Texas A&M that ran the clock down to three seconds we'll see the meaning of the penalty this broadcast brought to you by Budweiser who salutes parents who talk to their kids about drinking we all make a difference three seconds to go in the first quarter and there's no score in this ball game and it will be a penalty against Texas A&M on the punt Back to the 44. It favors Hash right. Ferris will be under center. Single setback. Wide to the right. Two on the left. That's the open side. He hands off. They go up the middle and the hand off to Weber. Weber gets two across the 45 to the 46-yard line. And that will bring this first period to a close with no score between and Texas A&M and Oklahoma State playing in Stillwater on this college football Saturday afternoon. No score. This is the Texas Aggie Radio Network. Second down and eight. The Aggies have the ball at their own 46-yard line. They put Whitaker in motion. Tombs the fullback. There's the snap. Rolling here to the right side. Throwing the ball. Caught. It'll a first down across the 45-yard line, right at the 45, caught by Bethel Johnson, and then hit and brought down by Chris Massey. So the Aggies will convert on a second down to a first down. 14.54 to go in the second period. There's no score in the ball game. A&M first and 10. Now with the ball at the OSU 45-yard line. Now the Aggies go with that unbalanced line, and they run Whitaker out the backside of the unbalanced line and, uh, and roll back to the strength to the right side, find Bethel on the curl route for nine yards in the first down down in OSU territory. Joe Weber will be the running back to the left of Ferris, who will start the play from a shotgun. Three wides on the left, one on the right. And handoff goes to Weber. A little bit of a hole. Then it closes immediately as he takes the ball to the 42-yard line on first and 10. That'll be a pickup of three. So it'll be second down and seven coming up. Kevin Williams, a sophomore out of Arkansas, 6'5", 270, made that stop. 
Aggies doing a good job so far, other than their first series, doing a good job of, uh, of keeping drives alive and moving the football. Just that one turnover deep in Oklahoma State territory, down almost to the goal line, uh, has kept them uh, from getting scores. And we are at no score here with 13.59 left in the uh, second quarter. Terrence Robinson checks out. Fata Carter comes in for the OSU uh, defense. Goins in motion. Under center was Ferris. Run the option. Now he cuts it back to his left. Gets across the 40 and will advance the ball down to about the 37-yard line. Not enough for a first down. He'll be shy of a first down by about, oh, two and a half. Just across the 38, but not quite the 37. So now the Aggies face a third down and about two and a half. They are three out of four on their third down conversions in this ball game. And as Steve Miller told you a little bit earlier, we are 45% coming into the game today. Aggies rank 35th in the country in scoring per game at 29.8 per outing. Now third down about two and a half. Aggies need the OSU 35. Shotgun, three to the left, and an inside handoff will go to Weber. Weber across the uh, 35, down inside. Well, right at the 30, knocked him out of bounds. First down, Texas A&M. Robbie Gillum, a uh, Highland Village uh, Marcus High School uh, product, a junior, just knocked Weber out of bounds at the 30, but not before he picks up a first down. The Aggies now have totaled eight of those in the game. We have no score. AM driving second quarter, 13 minutes to go. Uh, Weber with, a, with much more than he needed. It was a little counter and uh, well blocked on that right side. He broke loose, and it was a shoestring tackle that kept him from going for much more. Offset in the backfield will go with a, uh, it'll be a heavy eye. And they'll throw out in the flats, caught and then juggled for a moment by Ferguson, being chased behind the line, retreats all the way back to the 38-yard line. We're going to lose about eight yards on that play. That was first and ten. It was a low pass. Took it right off his shoe tops and then tried to get away from the pressure day, but ends up losing about nine yards. Well, he's trying to make the big play, and the, the ball was uh, one of those rare bad throws by Ferris, but uh, close enough that uh, it was catchable. And this is one of those you wish that... Uh, Ferguson didn't have such good hands that he wouldn't have been able to handle it because it was a, a big loss of nine yards. So now it is a second down and 19 with the clock rolling down to the 12-minute mark in the second and no score. Three wides on the right, one on the left, and one of those went in motion. That's Porter. Empty in the backfield. There's the snap from the shotgun. Has time. Now he cocks his arm and he throws, and it's in and out of the hands of Mickey Jones across the 35 at about the 32-yard line. Hit him right in the numbers, and then he was smacked as he got the ball by Michael Cooper, and it went incomplete. Well, a good job of, by Michael Cooper of, of timing his uh, hit and uh, on Jones and uh, also stripping the ball as he got to it, and he'll knock it loose, and it'll bring up a third and 19. Al Porras is this defense for OSU. Texas had 500-plus yards of total offense. Colorado had 524 yards of total offense. But today, they've been kind of like a wall here. It's third down and 19. Aggies need the OSU 20. Three wides to the right. Running back to the right of Ferris. And a flag. And they stopped the play, and the Aggies apparently did something. The Aggies moved. So now we're going to face third down and 24. Open sides to the right. Empty in the backfield. Two wides left. Three on the right. Ferris waiting on the snap. Has it. Has time. Now he's close to being sacked. He throws the ball high over the head of Porter at the 40 as he was hit from the backside and brought down. As he let go of the ball, he was hit from the backside. It looked like he got up and told the uh, referee, John Laurie, somebody had me by the face mask. So now the Ags will punt the ball, the line of scrimmage being the OSU 44-yard line on a fourth down and 24. Set for the O State return. And the Aggies make a shift here as they get their punt team out there. At the 41, a little bit high on the snaps. Gates has it. And the punt's away. Got a chance to kill this one if we can get to it. And it's going to take a great bounce and be killed at about the four yard line. Down at the four, killed. And they're going to mark it at about the three and a half. So a nice play there. Jonte Buell for the second time today got down there and killed the ball on a 41-yard punt by Cody Skates. 40 officially on the punt. First down and 10 for OSU at their four-yard line. 
single setback. They put a man in motion, going from the left back to the right. Now they'll hand off. They try the middle line of scrimmage at the four, and that's it. Cornelius Anthony made the stop for Texas A&M. Second down and ten coming up. 11.25 remaining in the first half, and there's no score. A&M and Oklahoma State. And the Cowboys have the football. Well, that was Jamal Fobbs that went in motion. And last year, he was the starting tailback. But they moved him to wide receiver and uh, used him in motion that time. Could have handed off to him. Uh, he's an experienced running back. But they didn't. They went right up the middle. High formation. Tim Burrow fullback. And Reggie White's the tailback. Under center is Pogai. As he snapped, looked like he had trouble trying to contain that. They'll throw out the flats. Ball will be caught by Fobbs, and he's out of bounds. Knocked out by Sammy Davis at the 11-yard line. Not enough for a first down, so they will face a third down and about two and a half for Oklahoma State. Sammy Davis into the game today. Has eight pass knockdowns and 28 tackles. He has interceptions this season. But against... Uh, the last, I guess the last one came against KSU, is that right? Last week. And they come back to the line of scrimmage on a third down and about two and a half. Oklahoma State at the 11. Drops back. Poe Guy waiting. Has time. Now rolling this way. Now still under some pressure. He is sacked inside the five. Back at the three. And a sack by Jason Glenn will be his fifth of the season. Well, I'm going to tell you why that happened. He wanted Fobbs on the stop route. About a three-yard route. But Christian Rodriguez in there at linebacker. A perfect drop right in front. Receiver Fobbs. A perfect drop into that zone coverage. And... Uh, he, Pogai just could not find a receiver. Finally, Glenn was able to bring him down back at the three, force another punt, and the Aggies should get excellent field position. And the punter, Elder, will be standing near the end line in the end zone. Out about the OSU 41 is Chris Taylor. As the snap, he's going to get it away in a hurry. The Aggies and Jay Brooks were coming up the middle over at about the 38. Now dropping back to the 40 after the catch is Chris Taylor, and he's wrapped up and goes down. They'll give him the 40-yard line at the 40. On the return, 36 yards. And the punt goes about 36 yards. 36 on the punt. Elder is third of the day. He's gone 25, 50, and 36. And your Aggies get it now. Great field position at the OSU 40. Still looking for first points. I formation. Tight end on the right. Have a flanker right. Have a tight end, rather a split in on the left. Play action. Now he's going to throw deep. He's got Ferguson. He's going end zone. Reaching out, bringing it in. Touchdown. Ferguson caught it at the five. It goes 40 yards. Touchdown, Texas A&M. And it is Robert Ferguson. Ferguson, his fifth touchdown of the season. Uh, working against Michael Cooper. I wonder if that will keep him from jawing at those receivers. We told you that Ferguson would be a main target today. And a perfect throw from Ferris right over the shoulder. 40-yard completion, and the Aggies draw first blood. 9.50 mark of the second quarter. And now on for the extra point will be Terrence Kitchens. He is 25 out of 27 this season. Holder is Botovich. Chance Pierce will be the deep snapper. Waiting on the snap. There it is, a little bit low. It's controlled by Botovich, and the extra point is up and good, and your Aggies lead by a score of 7 to nothing over Oklahoma State with 9.50 to go in the second. So the Aggies get on the board with a 40 pass to Robert Ferguson. Skates has just kicked off. Fobbs with a return. He took it at the 8. Broke a tackle at the 25. Gets out to the 32-yard line. So we kick off as we come back. And at the 8, Fobbs returns it out to the 32. And it will be Oklahoma State's football. The Aggies ahead now 7-0 with 9.40 to go in the uh, second quarter. On a pass to uh, Ferguson. He has six receptions, 71 yards. Simple drive to... Go back and recap. One play, 40 yards. Perfect pass from Ferris to Ferguson, but it all set up by the good punting by Cody Skates that uh, dropped uh, Oklahoma State back inside their five. Shotgun running back to the left of Pogai. And Tripp set up on the other side of the field. The handoff will go to Reggie White, and White will get maybe, uh, only got about a yard, maybe two yards. He got that out close to the uh, 35, so it'll be second down and seven coming up at their own 35-yard line. Oklahoma State's football, continental long distance, now offering matchmaker long distance to fit your needs. Aggie owned and operated, continental long distance and matchmaker, 1-800-97-Aggie. 
Ags on defense. Watch Oklahoma State break the huddle. Trips to the right. Running back to the left of Polga. He's got a split in here on the left side. Now he's moving his running back, and he's bringing the tight end. Actually, that's a wide receiver. Rivers in closer to the line. The Aggies jumped into the... Uh, They've dropped a flag, but now they've thrown out in the flats, and they've got the ball at the Aggie 40-yard line. There's two flags down, and I think both of them are against Texas A&M, and the ball was caught by Reggie White, and he takes it all the way down to the Aggie 38-yard line. Well, that's something you can't do when you see a flag. Go, it was uh, Jason Glenn, I think, jumped offside. The Aggies sort of paused. And they thinking, stopped. And exactly. They did. First down and 10. So we had a little mental lapse right there. They've got three wides lined up, one behind the other. Out wide to the right side. End on, inside handoff will go to White, and White will carry across the Aggie 35 to the 34. He picks up four. It'll be second down and six coming. We've got 8.43 remaining in the second quarter, and AM leading 7 nothing. But just like that, Oklahoma State coming back at them. Ball will be spotted, favoring the hash mark to the left side. Oklahoma State, all in orange with the white lettering and numerals, coming to the line of scrimmage. And again, three wides lined up, one behind the other, out wide right. Running back will be to the left of Pogai, split into the left. Drops back across the Aggie 40, now throws out in the flat, skips the ball, incomplete. Right in front of the intended receiver, Jamal Fobbs, right at his feet. That was actually behind the line of scrimmage, so now third down and six. Defensively for AM on that play was Jay Brooks. Uh, that's one of the reasons that when you're rushing the passer, you want to get your hands up in the air because the quarterback sometimes will lose the receiver. He threw this one five yards short of Fobbs out in the flat, and I think it was because he couldn't see. Jay Brooks has kind of become the all-around utility man. Three block punts, 30 tackles, two sacks, four uh, tackles behind the line, five pass knockdowns. Again, they'll go with the trips out to the right side. Moves his running back left to right. Now he moves him back the other way. Has the snap. He's going to run with the football. And he'll get wrapped up as he hits the 30-yard line. Not enough for a first down. Pole guy shy of a first down by about a yard. The fans are saying go for it. And the players are saying go for it, too. This is the option back to the left, and he's going to be about a yard short. And I would be very surprised if Oklahoma State didn't go for it here at the Aggie 29-yard line. Ron Edwards wrapped him up around the waist and prevented the first down carry. So now they're going to try for it on fourth down. They are now one of six on third downs. It's fourth down and one at the Aggie 29. Ags brought Cornelius Anthony back into the line, and uh, he's going to go down in a three-point stance. Run the option, going the other way. Poe guy will get the first down as he leaps across a would-be tackler out of his arms and falls forward to the 26-yard line. Jason Glenn and Wes Bonovich are chasing it, but not before they convert a fourth into a first. First and 10 at the Aggie 26, 7-28 to go, 7-0 the Aggies here in the second quarter. Now, Poe guy has good size. He's 6-3, about 225, and he also has pretty good speed. He showed it there as he got outside. He didn't get much, but he got just enough for the first down. Ash Mark to the right side. They've got trips here. Not lined up one behind the other as they've been doing on that right side. But they swing them out here on the left side. Going to throw out in the flats behind the line. They're going to throw a pass back to Pogai. The Aggies should be there. There's a block on the corner. Pogai lowers his head as he gets across the 20 and goes down to about the 18-yard line. Maybe the 17. Threw it to Marcellus Rivers behind the line. Rivers, the wide receiver, threw it right back to Pogai. And Pogai carries down to the Aggies 17. It'll be second down and a yard coming up. And a little trickery here. Double pass. It works for nine yards. The Aggies were not fooled, but they got a good block at the point of attack, and that's what sprung Pogai to pick up the nine. So second down and one yard. Slot to the left. Flanker right. Shotgun. Pogai, the snap, drops back to the 25, and he throws underneath, in and out of the hands, incomplete okay, to Jamal Fobbs. He was running before he got the ball. Third down on the yard coming up. This is that jailbreak screen where the receiver comes back to the quarterback and he gets his other receivers out in front of him. And Fobbs, as you said, Dave, just running before he caught the football. That'll set up third and one in an interesting situation. Do you throw it here or do you try to run for the first down? Aggie uh, For Aggie information, local news and free Aggie 
email, visit AggieNetwork.com, brought to you by the Association of Former Students. Pogai will move under center on third down and a yard, and he'll carry for a first down to the A&M 15-yard line. Or running into another Craig Oaks type, a freshman who's doing well at that position today for Oklahoma State. Oaks, of course, the freshman for Colorado, had a great game against this Texas A&M wrecking crew. Well, and a good surge that time by the offensive line. We told you they're huge. And you've got a big quarterback as well, a good surge by the offensive line, and that big quarterback just couldn't keep him from picking up the one yard for the first. Got first down and 10 at the Aggie, 14 and a half, hash right. Shotgun for Pogai, two wides left, one to the right, short side to the right, inside a handoff as he gives it to the running back. Stringing it out will be wide at the 10, at the 5, at the 4. First down and goal for Oklahoma State. Across the Aggie, 4, it was Reggie White. Christian Rodriguez finally caught him and brought him down. First and goal for the Cowboys. And just a counter coming back to the left side offensively and by the time he broke the containment on the outside there was nobody there. The secondary had to react back up to it but not before White had gone down to the four and picked up the first down making it first and goal. At the four, hash left for Oklahoma State. They got Tim Burry as the uh, fullback and White as the tailback. Out of an eye, two tights and a flanker right. The open sides to the right. He's going to move that flanker going in motion. Right to left, run the option. Pogai looking for the corner now. Cuts it inside to his left. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. First and goal at the four will carry for the touchdown. They're an extra point away from tying this one up at the 527 mark here in the second quarter. Now, Pogai just started the option back to his right, and the hole opened up uh, just outside the, where the tight end lined up, and he went into the end zone untouched from four yards out. Pogai just got his second touchdown of the season. Now here is Seth Conley. With the extra point, it's on its way, and they have tied the game with 5.27 remaining on the first half. It's tied at 7. Oklahoma State has come ready to play some football today, and the Aggies will have their hands full. Let's watch this one. This is Texas Aggie football. We have two return men standing back at the goal line. And here's the kick, Sidewinder coming over this way, Goins, goal line, back to the 5, to the 10, they're closing on him, stretching it out to the far side, 25, out across the 25 to the 30-yard line. Nice return of 30 by Goins, just across the 30, but shy of the 31, recap the drive, here's Dave Elbendorf. Well, OSU came right back with the kickoff after the Aggies had taken the lead 7 to nothing. a return, kickoff return out to the 38 by Fobbs, 11 plays, 62 yards, they had an offsides where the Aggies relaxed, Jason Jason Glenn jumped off sides. Everybody relaxed. They completed a pass to Reggie White. Good for 27 yards. Moved into Aggie territory. It was a four-yard option keep by Pogai. They got the touchdown. We're tied at seven. Whitaker will come out and line up as the lone setback. Under center is Ferris. Short sides to the left. Goins went in motion. Play action twice. Now throw it. Going to throw a high and into the sideline. Being chased from the backside was Ferris. He had pressure closing on him from Kevin Williams, a sophomore. For Oklahoma State threw it high. This sideline incomplete. So now second down and 10 coming up. At their own 31, Texas A&M with a football as they chase Ricklin Holmes and Marcus Jones back out onto the field along with Fata Carter for Oklahoma State. Break the huddle and count to the line of scrimmage. Shotgun for Ferris. He'll move Whitaker to his right. Three wides on the right. That's the open side. Split in left. High snap. Inside handoff, Whitaker. He is going to be close for a first down as he gets to the 40. He'll be a yard shy. Inside handoff, moving from the right to the left. Between the hash mark and that far sideline, it'll be third down on the yard coming up. Whitaker, a nice carry there. Uh, Ferris looked like a shortstop there, uh, trying to snag that uh, that center. It was a little bit high. He was able to bring it down, bring it down from it from above his head and just get the ball to Whitaker, who is going on the, uh, the counter, and he'll get very close to the first. Third down and one. Single set back behind Ferris on third and one. The Aggies now are four out of six on third down conversions. Waiting on the snap. Has it. Handoff goes to Toombs. Toombs got about five as he carries from the 40 out to the 45-yard line. Stop the clock. Move the chains. 426 to go in the first half. Game knotted at seven. Another good surge by the Aggie O-line. Uh, short yardage. You know, you know who, it's, uh, who it's going to. It goes to Jamar Toombs. But they got a good surge, and Toombs uh, found enough room to pick up about five. This broadcast brought to you in part by the Association of Former Students. We are the Aggie Network. 
First down and 10, Texas A&M at their own 45. Ball equidistance between the hash marks. Single setback, two tights, two flankers for Texas A&M. And the snap, then the handoff goes to Toombs, trying to pick a hole. There's not a whole lot there. Is he? Number five. He'll force his way to about the 48-yard line. At the 48, it will be a second down and seven coming up. They've got to net the Oklahoma State 45. So the Aggies going with two tight ends and two wide receivers that try to spread them out and then run Toombs right up the middle. That'll loosen them up a little bit for about three yards. Greg Richmond, a redshirt freshman for Oklahoma State, just made that stop. Pretty good size, 6'2", 240, playing one of those linebacker positions. So here we go on the second down and seven with the clock now under three minutes and 30 seconds to go in the first half. Game tied at seven. Three wides to the left, out of the shotgun, throw the ball, caught by Taylor, jukes a man but can't get away from a second. He'll be a yard shy of a first down at the OSU 46-yard line. Taylor Leap brought it down. They closed on him in a hurry. It was Albert and Craig seven, and Marcus seven. Jones. That was a double slant that time. You had Taylor and you had Ferguson out to the left side. Double slant, he decided to go to Taylor. And uh, Taylor was gonna, is going to come just a little bit short of the first down. And... Uh, we might see Jamar once again on this third and about one and a half. Just across the 48, uh, 47 rather than not quite the 46. Two tights, single setback, tombs, handoff, fights for the first down. I don't know if he got it. He did not. He's shy of a first down by the length of a football. Official on this side spotting it on the A&M side of the 45, so a half yard shy. Clock now 228, 226. That's until halftime. The game tied at seven. Dwayne Levels, one of those, in on the stop of Toombs. Aggies now on third downs are five out of eight. Well, they're going to go for it here on fourth and less than a yard. Fourth down and short. Ferris under center has the snap, gives it to Toombs. And he is fighting for a first down. This official has got it spotted in the wrong place. He got across the 45-yard line. Give it to the other guy, and the other guy, I think, is going to get it. Will he or will he not? They have not put the ball down yet. Now they have, but we Time can't see it. Measurement. They've put it down right now. I can't, still can't see the football. Well, it looked clearly like Toombs got across that 45-yard line, and that's where the marker is. Boy, oh, howdy, right. that's a bad spot. Ferguson down here on the bottom. The tight end is Roderick Broughton. Eye formation with Ferris under center. Split into the left. Play action. Drops back. Throwing deep. He's got Ferguson again. Ferguson's waiting on it. Ferguson caught the football. No, incomplete. Passes Juggling as he's going out of bounds and apparently incomplete. And you got no argument from Ferguson as he caught the ball inside the five. And he and two defenders rolled out of bounds at about the two-yard line. And it was Michael Cooper who was down there and was trying to prevent Ferguson from catching the ball. And they all went out of bounds. Ferguson, Massey, and Cooper go out of bounds. And it goes incomplete. So second down and 10. Boy, he had him on the go once again. Ball just a little bit underthrown. Ferguson was well behind the secondary. Had to come back just a little bit. Gave the secondary time to catch up. Second down and and he was bobbling it as he went out of bounds. Shotgun with a running back on either side of Ferris. Two wides on the left. Split into the right. No tight end in this formation. As the snap has time. Now he throws as he's hit. He throws high and it's going to be incomplete. Ferguson across the 35. Incomplete at the 33-yard line. Hit and went down in a hurry as he caught the uh, football. And then in and out of his hands. Uh, he did never have control. Never got his feet on the ground with control of the football. OSU players are complaining that this should have been a fumble. But uh, it was a good call by the official. He never got his feet down with the ball in his hands. Albert Craig was there to hit Ferguson as he caught the ball. He was high in the air. When he came down, he did not have control along with Michael Cooper. So now third down and 10. So twice they have gone to Ferguson and both times Oklahoma State has risen to the occasion. Third and 10 at the OSU 45. They need the 35 to the Aggies. Drop back across the 50 out of the shotgun. Throws the ball and it is low at the 32-yard line. Can't be controlled or caught by Chris Taylor. Would have been enough for a first down but can't convert. 
So OSU holds with 132 to go until halftime and the game tied at seven. Their defense playing pretty good ball, as is their offense. Well, they brought pressure that time and got just enough uh, pressure on Ferris that he was on his back foot when he threw that ball. Couldn't get enough zip on it to Taylor, and it was about a yard short of Taylor being able to catch it for the first. This is the best I've seen. Here's the snap. And there's the punt by Skates. They're moving up. They'll take it at the 13-yard line. Not a fair catch. The Aggies trying to close on him. Gets it back across the 15 to about the 16-yard line on the punt return. I think that might have been Chris Massey. And uh, they'll bring it back after a 32-yard punt. He kicked that one for effect. So now with 121 remaining in the first half of the game, tied at 7, Oklahoma State gets the ball at their own 16-yard line. The ball first down and 10 at their own 16-yard line. We've got 121 remaining in the first half of the game, tied at 7. Pogai will move under center with a single set back lined up about 6 yards behind him. And it's play action up the middle. will go wide, broke a tackle out to the 30, out across the 34 near the 35-yard line. White's got a reception in the ball game that went 27 yards on a play that the Aggies thought had been whistled dead that eventually led that drive into a touchdown, and he just carries their day out to the 34. 18 yards on that carry. Just a quick hitter up the middle and a couple of missed tackles, and now they're out to the 34-yard line. A minute five left and only one timeout for Oklahoma State. Jared Morrison, the lineup. First down and 10. Pogai throwing the ball, and it will be out on the flats to Kari Jackson at the line of scrimmage. Knocked down as soon as he caught it by Jay Brooks. Brooks in at 5'9", 183, and Kari Jackson at 6'4", 250. And the ball, uh, the clock will run down to the 45 second. Of course, the, the, that tackle inbounds keeps the clock running. They have a timeout remaining. Is that right? Yeah, they have only one, yes. Second down and about nine. He got a yard. The line of scrimmage now, the 35. OSU, shotgun, pole guy with the ball. Looking to the far sideline, throws the ball. And caught on his knees, Rashawn Woods. The Aggies were diving for it. Wes Bodovich trying to get a hand on it. And now they will face, a, they're going to call a timeout. Uh, they Pogai will. signaling for a timeout. Face a third down and a yard when we come back. It's third down and about a yard for OSU at their own 43 following the timeout. Handoff goes to White, spins as he hits the line of scrimmage, and he will get a first down at the 45-yard line. They'll stop the clock to move the chains, and they'll have time for one more play. They're going to roll it here in a hurry. They'll be right over the ball and ready to snap it as soon as they put the chains in place. Pole guy will move under center. And they will uh, take the snap, and he will throw it into the turf right behind his center, John Vandrell. And stop the clock now with seven seconds to go. And facing a second down and ten at their own 46-yard line. So it probably they will be everybody go deep. Is it in you? Well, they, they need to get about uh, about 20 yards to have legitimate field goal range. Move it down to about the 35-yard line. Go back to the line of scrimmage. The Aggies chasing two men off the field. Flemons and Lennis Smith dropping back across his 35. Now stepping up. He's looking deep, and he's going zone. They've got some men down there, and the Aggies are there as well. And it's intercepted by Sammy Davis. Here's the return to the 30. Out of bounds he goes, and time will run out. Do we have a flag down? No Davis flags. Pointing down. You're, you're I was pointing at the zeros on the clock. Okay, and that will be it. So Sammy Davis just got the INT, which will be his fourth of the season. And that'll be the last play of the first half. And we'll go to halftime with Texas A&M and Oklahoma State tied here in Stillwater at seven apiece. Keep the spirit alive. Aggies don't let Aggies drink and drive for a safe... That game is sold out. Don't call for tickets. We are sold out. AM will receive to start the second half. Here's the kickoff. Goins two yards deep. 
went down to take the ball and took a knee. Didn't mean to, but he did. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Looked like that was an excuse me. He was trying to feel the ball, yeah. and I think he put the left knee down, and then he dropped his head now because he, he did not want to go down. He wanted to try to return that. I think he misjudged it a little bit and uh, and went down, and of course when the knee touches, he's down, and uh, Aggies will start at their own 20. One thing we have noticed today we did not talk about when we were recapping the first half is that uh, Oklahoma State has been putting more pressure on uh on Ferris than anybody we've seen so far this year. Well, we knew they liked to come with pressure, and that will give you some mismatches, and we knew that uh, they were going to get to him now and then. Ferris out of a shotgun, a high snap inside handoff, and out at the 25 across the uh, 30, and that's, I think, is that Maurice Harris? Or is it Whitaker? Whitaker out across the 30 to the 34-yard line. Picks up a first down, so a great start, and the Aggies have a man down, and it's Chris Valletta setting on his backside. He's down inside the 30 at about the 27-yard line. We'll hope he's okay. And the training staff out quickly to 10-2, Chris Valletta. Now this is a quick handoff to uh, Whitaker back to the left side, and uh, he broke one tackle at the line of scrimmage and uh, just kept on going. Went all the way out to the 35, well, just outside the 34-yard line. Valletta running off the field. Looks like he'll be fine. All right, so he's more or less jogging off the field. He's sat there for a while. Training staff came out, and he will go to the sideline. They will have an evaluation there quickly on Valletta. And we'll check and see who his replacement uh, will be, and I think that's going to be Billy Yates. Billy Yates will come in now at that left guard position. Eye formation under center, first down and 10. Ferris drops back, throws. He goes out to the 41-yard line. That'll be Ferguson, and they'll give him forward progress across the 42 to the 42 and a half on a first down and 10. It'll be second down coming up, and about two will be needed by A&M. Just underway here in the second half, and the game tied at 7. Well, OSU keeps matching up Michael Cooper with Ferguson, and Ferguson is able to catch those six- and eight-yard patterns almost at will. And as soon as Cooper kind of starts scooting up, then Ferguson will go deep with him. Billy Yates has gone back to the sideline. Valletta's back in the O-line. Second down, about a yard and a half. Inside handoff goes to Whitaker. Big hole, 50. Coming back this way, 40. Now he will go across the 35 and down at the 32-yard line. Will go Whitaker. Two big runs by Whitaker to start this second half. First and 10, Texas A&M, OSU, 32-yard line. 13.49 to go here in the third game. Tied at seven. That went for 25 yards. Now this looks like a different offense, and that's what Richard Whitaker brings to you when he's healthy. He's got that breakaway threat. He uh, Started back to his right side, broke it all the way back over to the left side, and he's tackled on the left hash. And he'll pick up 24 and move it down to the 32-yard line in OSU territory. He got 25 yards on that. Toombs had 25 yards total in the first half on seven carries. There's the snap, drop back, throw. It goes to Porter. Porter caught the ball at the OSU 28. They push him back across the 30, but he's going to get the 28-and-a-half-yard line on a first down and 10. Picks up about three. We'll call it second and seven coming up. Albert Craig will wrap up. Greg Porter. Uh, Greg Porter. Looks like one of the adjustments the Aggies made at the half is that when they get pressure, they've got an outlet guy. That time it was Porter. They ran him out into the flat. He got heavy pressure, but he was able to get it off and make it a positive play. He'll pick up about three. Shotgun with a running back to the uh, right of Ferris for Porter in the ball game. Now he's got two catches for 11 yards. Inside handoff once more. Goes to Whitaker. Big hole down to the 20-yard line. Suddenly the running game is clicking for Texas A&M. First down and 10 Texas A&M. Whitaker now getting it in big chunks. Well, earlier in the game, Dwayne Goins picked up 19 on the reverse. This was that same reverse action with Goins going back, but instead they hand it to Whitaker right up the middle, and he'll take it for the first down just outside the OSU 20. So now it is first down and 10 for Texas A&M near the 20-yard line. Hash right, game tied at 7, 12 and a half to go in the third. Drops back after going under center, throws it out here to Ferguson. He's at the 15, broke a tackle, dives forward, and he's going to be close for a first down at the 10-yard line. I think, I think he got it. Extra effort reaching out, stretched out, got the ball to the 10. Terrence Robinson on the tackle, and Ferguson just caught another one. And that's going to be number 8, Dave, and he's uh, got 90 yards on eight receptions. He's He has just uh, been the star today. Eight receptions. That will match his season high. Had eight for 95 against Texas Tech. He caught seven for 174 in the ball game against Wyoming. So one more reception will be a new career high. And now they are they're going to have to they're going to set the chains. They are not. 
All right, so the chain's in his first down and goal at the 10 for Texas A&M. Shotgun running back to the left of Ferris. First possession of the second half for your Aggies. Two wides on the right. One going in motion. Goins. Handoff will go to Whitaker. Bottled up as he hits the 10. He's set up as the left half back out of a shotgun to the left of Ferris. Hands off, hits the line, dropped down at the 10 by Jaquay Thomas and Kevin Williams. Second and goal from the 10-yard line again for Texas A&M. Now that's that same action that uh, the last time they handed it to Whitaker. He went right up the middle for the first down. This time OSU was ready for it, and they'll stop it for no gain. Ash Mark to the left side. There go Taylor and uh, Ferguson to the right. That's Bethel Johnson coming down as a split in on the left. Single set back with Ferris under center. Quick snap, run the option. Pitch it back now, going to the right corner. He should get in. He will. Touchdown, Whitaker. Option over the right side. Pitched it at the right moment. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Well, Mark Ferris continues to make great decisions. They ran the option back to the right side. And as soon as the, the uh, would-be tackler came up to... to to challenge uh, Mark Ferris. Perfect pitch to Whitaker. He'll go in untouched from the 10-yard line, and this is a great first drive. What a great way to start the second half for the Aggies. Well, you called it in the halftime review, uh, Dave, getting off to a great start. Come out and do something with the first possession, and the Aggies did it. Now waiting on the extra point. Pierce will snap, Botovich will hold, and Kitchens will kick. Here is the extra point on its way, and the Aggies have changed the numbers again. It's 14 to 7, 11.43 to go in the third quarter. Texas A&M leading Oklahoma State here in Stillwater. This is the Texas Aggie Radio Network. Derek Leckler has checked in to kick off. Leckler is the younger brother of All-American punter Shane Leckler. He kicked off, I know, one time last year. And he has just kicked this one off and again will be short at the 11-yard line. Fobbs back to the 15 to the 20, stringing it out far side, 30, 35, and he trips over a man across the 40 to the 45-yard line. Mile, mile, mile. Just like that, they come charging right back at you. Now, again, was a short kick. We are having a difficult time, Dave, trying to put that into the end zone. Took it from the right side all the way back across the field, picked up some blockers over about the 30-yard line, and they'll carry it all the way out to the 47. Great field position for OSU, and here they come. 37-yard return by Fobbs. Spot the ball at the OSU 47. First time on offense here in the second half for OSU. Poe guy will go under center. Single setback. Two wides to the right, one to the left. And the handoff will go to Reggie White. Boca tackle, 50, 45, 30. Caught from the backside by Jamison. And they go out of bounds at the Aggie 27-yard line. That's going to be good for 26 yards. Well, he went off tackle to the left side. It looked like he was bottled up, but he wouldn't go down. And it was a foot race. And if Jamison doesn't catch him just barely by the shoulder pad, he goes the distance. They've moved it all the way down to the Aggie 27-yard line. He's now 11 carries almost 90 yards on the day for Reggie White. He had a great game against Texas. 15 carries, 104 yards. First down and 10 at the Aggie, 27-yard line. Shotgun, guy inside handoff. Reggie White hits the line of scrimmage. The Aggies have him in a chokehold, and he will net the 25-yard line. It'll be second down and about no eight coming up. Time is 11.05 to go here in the third, and Texas A&M has a 14-7 lead. The Aggies went on an eight-play, 80-yard drive. Whitaker scored on a 10-yard run. And now Oklahoma State got a 37-yard kickoff return. And then a 25-yard run, one by Jamal Fobbs, and then the run by White. They're going to throw a half-back pass. Here is White looking to throw. Now he will. He'll throw it away into the sideline. He was looking for Jamal Fobbs down around the five-yard line. He was in triple coverage and threw the ball away into the sideline. Incomplete. And now bring up third down and eight. Well, it was the early pitch uh, by Pogai back to White, and uh, it didn't fool a single Aggie. They were trying to get Fobbs on, a, on an in-and-out route, uh, hoping that uh, the Aggies would support the run, but uh, Michael Jamison, Sean Weston, Wes Botovich all back there. 
to uh, keep this one from being complete. It's going to be third and about eight. Wrecking crew ranked number 14 in the nation in total defense coming into the ball game today. Third down and eight. Line of scrimmage, the Aggie 25. They need to get the ball to about the 17-yard line, Oklahoma State. Pole guy out of the shotgun, Lobbin one over the middle, caught and then dropped in and out of the hands of the wide receiver, Marcellus Rivers. Might have scored had he hung onto the ball. The two Aggie defenders collided, and he was juggling. It was Sammy Davis and Wes Botovich. Well, Marcellus Rivers is actually a tight end playing wide receiver. He's uh, he's big at about 6'6", and uh, about uh, 240, uh, but uh, they got him outside and this time Botovich looked like he had the interception or was going for it and was unable to bring it down. Rivers almost hung on to take it in for the touchdown. Field goal effort will be kicked from the 32 yard line an effort of 42. The angles back to the left. Conley is their placements man. Here is his kick and it's on its way and he got it. And just like that they make it a 14 to 10 ball game with 10 29 remaining in the third quarter. They answer the Aggie touchdown with a field goal and it is 14 to 10. 10 29 to go on the third. Join it. Oklahoma State kicks off. Aggies are waiting for it. Goins at the goal line of the 5 to the 10. Coming back this way at the 15. Breaks the tackle. Gets out across the 20 to about the 23-yard line. Here's Dave Elmendorf. Oklahoma State came roaring back after the Aggies made it 14 to 7. They got a 35-yard return of the uh, kickoff by Fobbs. Set up shop at the OSU 47 on the first play. A 26-yard run by Reggie White. Took it into A&M territory. The drive stalled after five plays, 28 yards. And Conley kicks a 42-yard field goal. Makes it 14-10 at the 10:29 mark of the third quarter. Whitaker now in the ball game, seven carries, 66 yards, five for 58 in the second half. White for OSU, 12 carries, 88 yards. Eye formation behind Ferris, first down and 10 at the Aggie, 23. Motion from Ferguson, play action. Ferris hit as he throws the ball, and we had flags, and it stopped the play, and apparently we did something wrong. Ferris has been under pressure a lot today, more than we have seen in any game so far this season. Well, another one of those little silly fouls that we have been picking up today. Under center, Ferris, single set by. Porter's going in motion, left to right. Drops back, here's a delay, it goes out of the backfield of the 30 to the 35, across the 40, right at the 40-yard line. That looks like, is that Ferris? Sorry, that's, that's Weber. 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 Boy, he showed some Whitaker type speed out to the 40, and that goes good for 22 yards. First and 10. Texas AM stopped the clock. 10.07 to go in the third. Aggies up by a score of 14 to 10. Weber, his best carry of the day. One of the things that you're vulnerable to when you bring the rush like uh, OSU does is the, uh, the draw play. This is just the delay draw. Take it back to Weber and let him pick a hole. He found a huge hole off to the right side, carries it out to the 40, 22 yards. Toombs the lead back, and Whitaker. Now is checked in as the tailback. With a flanker left and a split end on the right. The handoff went to Whitaker, spinning around. He is caught at the 40 and dropped at the 40 by Albert Craig. This defense coming into the ball game today was ranked 79th in the country in total defense, giving up 389 yards a game. So now second down and 10 coming up, nine and a half to go in the third quarter. Ferris looking to the sideline for the play. Andre Brooks was in the offensive line uh, on that last play. Second down. And, and it looks like that's the starting offensive line in there. Lonnie Madison's the tight end here on the left side. Two wides to the left. Single setback. Ferris under center. Goins goes in motion. Dropping back to throw. Does caught at the 45-yard line. Across the 50. That's Bethel Johnson. And he will go that's down at the right. OSU 48. First and 10. Texas A&M. Clock stops. 9.04 to go in the third. 14 to 10. Texas A&M leading Oklahoma State. Well, when you've got that man-to-man -man coverage you and you've got three wide receivers in there, you're going to get some matchups. That time, Chris Massey working against Bethel. It's just a stop pattern. Bethel breaks the tackle by Massey, is able to pick up 13 and move into OSU territory with the first and 10. Barris will go under center with an eye formation. Toombs, and behind him is Whitaker. Toombs saying something to Whitaker. Tight end, Roderick brought. Short side was back to the left, and he's going to be sacked. 
back across the 50 at the 46-yard line, and that will be the second time, at least the second time today, that he's been sacked. That was a, a, a pattern that takes a long time to develop. It was a stop and go to Ferguson. He faked the uh, the short pass to Ferguson, and then took, Ferguson took off up the field, but he never got time to get the ball off. He'll lose about uh, about seven yards, bring up second and 17. Move the ball back across the 50 to the Aggie 47-yard line. Now they need to net the uh, OSU 37-yard line. Second down and about 17 with a shotgun. Whitaker to the left of Ferris. And now they are... Timeout. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State's going to ask for a timeout. A&M facing a second down and 17 after an OSU timeout. They're trying to make a couple of defensive changes on the Cowboys. As the AX come to the line of scrimmage second showing a shotgun with a running back to the left of Ferris. That will be Whitaker. Tied in on the left side. Second down, 17. They need the 37. High snap, controls it, drops back, now throws over the middle. Going to be caught and then dropped by Ferguson. Did he get the ball back? He did. It's going to be a reception. And they will complete it to the OSU 46. Shy of a first down by nine. So third down and nine coming up. Fata Carter, Jaquay Thomas on the tackle for the Cowboys. OSU coming with the blitz once again right up the middle. A good job of picking it up, and Ferris sees it coming. Drops the ball to Ferguson quickly over the middle, and he's going to pick up about eight. But uh, they needed 17, so he's shortened by nine. nine 16 of 25, the throwing the ball 158 yards for Ferris. Third down and nine for the Aggies. Eye formation behind Ferris. Puts Ferguson in motion. Has the snap. Rolls to his right. Looking down the field. Caught and trying to get it for the first down will be Ferguson. They ran him out of bounds about the spot needed as he was spun into the sideline by one of the Cowboy defenders. They will give him the 37-yard line, and that might have been a poor spot as far as Oklahoma State was concerned. Well, actually, what uh, Ferguson did was he had the ball in his hand, and he pushed it, and he moved it out in front of the stakes before he went out of bounds, and uh, so that's where they should mark the football, and it looks like it will be enough for the first. On a third and nine, they got it. Ferguson reaching out and getting the ball to the point that the Ags needed for the first down. So stop the clock, 7.24 to go in the third. A&M 14 and Oklahoma State 10. First and 10 for the Aggies. 18 first downs in the ball game for Texas A&M. 300 plus yards, now 312 in total O for the Ags. Two wides here on the left side, one at the top. These are both flankers on this side. Shotgun running back to the left. Harris high on the snap. Hand off as it goes to Weber. Weber hits and got a yard. At the 35, hey, they Weber bottled him up. He spun one time and right into the hands or arms of Greg Richmond. So second down and nine coming up for Texas A&M. Hash mark to the right side. That's the action where they bring Goins in motion, and he's uh, the reverse man. And uh, the other option is to hand it to Weber or to have Mark Ferris keep it. He handed to Weber right up the middle. It's a very short gain, about a yard and a half. Career high in catches today for Ferguson. Now 10 catches, 107 yards, his best in yardage, 170 four against Wyoming. Second down and nine. Trips to the left. Empty in the backfield. Throw it here to Mickey Jones. It's a little screen and he will be close for a first down as he breaks across the 30 and gets down to the OSU 28 yard line. Chris Craig Make it Elbert Craig caught him around the ankles and tripped him up shy of the 28. Ags will face third down, a yard and a half will be needed. Uh, just like the draw play is a, a good play to use against a lot of rushing, a lot of pressure, so is the screen pass. This one's just a quick throw to Mickey Jones. The other receivers block out front, and he'll pick up good yards. He'll be only about a yard and a half short. Third down right here. Don't see any changes in the offensive front for Texas A&M. Three wides to the right, one to the left. Shotgun running back to the left of of Ferris and he will hand off the Aggies will get a first down carry out of Joe Weber as he spun at the 25 and then goes down about the 24 yard line a little spin move there and Dwayne Levels finally brings him down but the Aggies get another first down and they'll spot it just across the 25 yard line well what you need from your backs in a short yardage situation particularly a back like Joe Weber who has such good size is you need to make sure that the first man that hits him doesn't stop him as you said Dave the spin move kept him going and he picks up plenty 
Bonnie for the first down as he moves inside the 25-yard line. 5.45 to go on the third, 14 to 10. The Aggies first down and 10 A&M at the OSU 24-yard line. Motion from Porter. There's the snap. Throw the ball. Porter caught it to the 20, being chased backside. Got away from one man. Spins away from another at the five. Inside the five to about the two goes Greg Porter. Great moves by Porter to get away from two would-be tacklers. Uh, Porter just keeps getting better and better and better. That one good for 22 yards, and he was stopped after he caught a short pass. It was only about an eight-yard pass into the flat. He did the rest of it on its own. Once again, a nice spin move to get away, then broke another couple of tackles, and it's going to be first and goal for the Aggies at the two-yard line. Steve, what do you got? We appreciate. Quickly, uh, the Aggies, like, seven of, of ten on third downs. Earlier this week on Tuesday, they spent, like, the last ten minutes of their practice doing nothing third down conversions, doing different situations. Looks like it's paid off today. First and goal at the two eye and two tights, and the handoff goes to Toombs, butting his way into the end zone. Touchdown, lowered his head, gave him the shoulder, and Toombs has just scored his 12th touchdown of the season. Aggies make it a 20 to 10 lead over Oklahoma State. We've got 526 to go in the third quarter with a point after to come. So the Aggies have come out here and taken care of business in the second half. Both times they've touched the football, they've driven it down the field and gotten the, uh, the touchdowns that they need, and uh, they'll take a, a lead of 20 to 10 with the extra point to come. Kitchens will kick it. Bonovich will hold it. Chance Pierce will snap it. They jumped into the neutral zone, but I think they got back before the snap. There's no flags, and the extra point will be good. 526 remaining on the third. The Aggies now up by 11. 21 to 10 over Oklahoma State at Lewis Field in Stillwater. This is. Kick off to the goal line, returned by Fobbs, got out of one group, and now across the 20 to the 24-yard line. They've been having a pretty good day of it, returning kickoffs. That one went to the goal line, and Fobbs returns it 24 yards to the OSU 24. It's 21 to 10, Texas A&M leading Oklahoma State with 5.15 to go in the third quarter. Take a look at that drive. The Aggies uh, coming back with a, a very nice drive. 11 plays, 77 yards. They took the kickoff. Got a 22-yard pass completion to Porter that took it down to the OSU 2. Toombs gets the touchdown. Two-yard run. The Aggies lead it 21 to 10, 526. Ferguson, uh, Whitaker, and Toombs have all scored in the ball game today. First down and 10. The spot was at the 25. Play action. Pole guy rolling to the sideline. Now let's rip with one high into the sideline and incomplete. It went out of bounds at about the 40. The nearest man to it was back at the 25-yard line and that at the line of scrimmage, but incomplete on that pass. For Pogai now, he's 10 of 19 throwing the ball for 58 yards with one interception. For Ferris, 19 of 28, 196 yards, 349 in total offense for Texas A&M, 180 in total O for Oklahoma State. Second down and 10, shotgun for Pogai, the OSU quarterback. Line of scrimmage, the 25, has the snap. Now he starts up the middle. He's wrapped up behind the line after he dropped back to throw. Nothing there. He got back to the 24. He lost a yard. He met head on with Brian Gamble, the sophomore, the number one tackle on the ball club who had 81 stops coming into the game today. Now third down and 11 for the Cowboys. Two good things happened here. Great coverage downfield so Pogai was forced to run and gamble. The spy linebacker, apparently they've got to, and some of their defense, they've got a spy for Pogai and Brian Gamble reacted as soon as he saw him move toward the line of scrimmage and he'll stop him for a one yard loss. A touchdown scored by Pogai for Oklahoma State was only the fourth rushing touchdown given up by the wrecking crew. Third down and 11 out of the shotgun. They were wanting to set up a screen. Now they're going to throw it sideline, and they do, and it goes into the OSU bench. Screen wasn't working. The screen man was going to be Reggie White. A lot of pressure was applied by Gerard Penwright that time on Pogai, who had to dump it off. Well, what happened here is they let everybody go on the screen as you're supposed to. Jason Glenn is so smart, he realized what was happening, and he dropped back off of his rush. Gerard Penwright coming from the other side kept the pressure on, but Jason Glenn got in front of the receiver, and there was nothing that Oso Pogai could do except throw Throw it away. OSU will have to punt. Chris Taylor will be standing at the Aggie 41 to take this punt. He's returned 15 punts for an average of eight coming into the ball game today. His longest has been 38. High snap, brought it down. Ags were coming, but they will pull off and let him get the kick away. Now with a fair catch call for, we're going to get the halo rule here. 
Uh, it will be Taylor taking the fair catch back at the Aggie 34. And they infringed on that halo, and it goes 42 yards off the foot of the putter, Scott Elder. His that, fourth putt of the day. That was Tatum Bell that got down there and, and got within the two-yard mark as uh, Chris Taylor signaled for the fair catch. It'll cost them five yards, and it'll move it from the 34 up to the 39, where the Aggies will take it over first and 10. First down and 10 for Texas A&M. It's now their own 39 after the five-yard markup. Play action, end around, goes back to Bethel Johnson, trying to get away from one man he did as he turns the corner on the far side of the field and then knocked into the sideline, and out of bounds he goes at the Aggie 45. Five, and they wiped out, I think, one of the uh, student managers on that sideline. Well, this is a really interesting play. Dwayne Goins comes in motion from the right side to the left. They had Bethel Johnson lined up short. Uh, very close to the to the uh, tight end on the left side, and it was a double reverse. You had Goins going one way, and they gave it to Bethel Johnson going the other, and he'll pick up about six. Becky Jones and Goins coming to this side of the formation on the left at the top side. I think that's Ferguson. Now Goins is going in motion. Single set back under center. Throw the ball. Ball's going to be caught at midfield and now lowering his head and going down to the OSU 43-yard line. Is that Ferguson again? It is. Ferguson just caught that's another right pass. That should six. be his 11th Ferguson of the day. Zero. Down to the OSU 43. First and 10, Texas A&M. We got 4-0-1 remaining of the third. The Aggies are up 21-10 to and they are dialing for more points right now. Dave, they are so afraid of Ferguson. He's, they've got so much respect for him. They're giving him a 10-yard cushion. <laughs> and that was just, he just uh, ran a 10-yard uh, stop pattern, and there was nobody within five yards of him. Ferguson on this side, we've got, I think that's either Bethel or Goins on the top with two tights, and it's play action, waiting to throw. Here's Ferris, now he'll throw. Ferguson will bring it down at the 30, retreats back to the 33, now down to the field and out of bounds at the 25-yard line. we got two flags okay, down, back six. from the spot where Ferris Ferguson. threw the football. Now well, you have an injured Oklahoma State player. He wanted the post, the post to Bethel, and it was covered. And Ferguson uh, was just working around in the middle of the field. And uh, Ferris uh, saw him and got the ball, and it delivered it high. Ferguson went up, caught it, bounced off a couple of would-be tacklers, and then took it down to the 25-yard line. You've got a couple of things. You've got two flags back there, and you've got an injured player down at the 30-yard line. And we've also got uh, Robert Ferguson down outside the field of play into that, he's around that putting net that the kickers use. And the training staff is down tending to him right now. All right, first down now and 20 for the Aggies. The ball moved back to the 47-yard line under center. A draw out of the backfield as it goes to Whitaker. Broke a tackle. Man on his back carries him down to the OSU 45-yard line. Picks up about eight on that one. And now a and will face a second down and 12 coming up. Steve will continue to monitor that situation with Ferguson. Ferguson is up now. And uh, can you tell anything right now, Steve? No, the only other thing is that he's also got a big gash on his hand from the metal of this kicking net, too. So they're going to have to work on that as well. We'll get an update here in a couple of minutes. My, oh, my. Uh, there's so. an update on Whitaker, uh, Dave, after that eight-yard carry. He's got nine carries now for 74 yards. Here's second down and 12. Mickey Jones in motion under center. Ferris, quick drop, throws to the sideline. Bethel Johnson catches it at the 40-yard line. That was second and 12. Picked up five. It'll be third down and seven coming up. 2.48 to go in the third quarter. The Aggies lead 21-10 to 10 over Oklahoma State. They've got the ball now at the 39-yard line, Oklahoma State side of the 50. Well, Dave, the Aggies facing that first and 20 didn't panic and didn't try to pick it up all at once. They pick up an eight-yard run, then they pick up a five-yard completion. Suddenly, they've got a, a third and seven that they can pick up. They'll need to net the 33-yard line. Line of scrimmage, they call it the 40. Shotgun, running backs both sides of Ferris. Has the snap, drops back, throws, coming back to this sideline. And intercepted by Oklahoma State at the 35-yard line. The interception by Paul Jones. <laughs> Number nine, Paul Jones with the... Jones ball. stepped right in front of the intended receiver on the play, and it might have been Taylor, and he went down with Taylor on his back at the 35. Turnover against Texas A&M. Hell, nice reaction by Jones. It was a long throw, so a long time to beat for the ball to be delivered. Jones reacted back to it, took it away from Chris Taylor, and OSU will get the ball at their own 35. 11 catches for Ferguson. That's the most since Albert Connell 
had 11 against Colorado in 1996. So 11 now for Ferguson, but we're tending to him on the sideline. First down and 10, Oklahoma State at their 35. Inside handoff will go to White. White back to the 35. White is pulled back to this side of the 35-yard line. That went nowhere. It'll be second and 10 coming up for Oklahoma State. Well, now it's time for the wrecking crew to take charge. That was the first down play. Is that counter to White and absolutely no yardage there. Let's see what we've got. The officials are... They got a spot at the 35-yard line. One of the officials lost his hat. I guess maybe he got knocked down on that fray down there. Yeah, he may have gotten hurt, and that's why they're uh, they're stopping play here temporarily. Reggie White carried 25 times for 187 yards against Tulsa. He had 15 for 104 against Texas. He was 16 for 76 in their game with Colorado four times this year. White has been over 100 yards. Second down and 10 line of scrimmage, the OSU 35-yard line. Shotgun for Pogai. Now he's calling an audible, bringing Rivers back in closer to the line of scrimmage. Jags are coming on the outside blitz, and up the middle will go Pogai, and he'll carry for about five yards. Took it right behind the center in that vacated spot there. They'll carry to the 40. It'll be third down coming up, and five will be needed. Evan Peroni made the stop. I ran the option, and uh, Reggie White was the trail man. He faked the pitch to, uh, to White and got a little bit of movement out of the Aggies and turned his head up, and he'll pick up about five. Going to need a little bit more than five, not quite their 46-yard line. So a third down play coming up with 142 remaining of the third quarter and the Aggies leading 21 to 10. Out of the shotgun, low snap, drops back to the 30. Plenty of time, throws out to midfield, caught, and it'll be a first down. And the reception made by Rashawn Woods at the 50-yard line. Sammy Davis will tackle him, but they convert a third into a first. And now they are four of 11 on third down conversions in the ball game. Well, they had Woods on the uh, crossing route and just a lot of time to throw. Uh, Woods running away from Sammy Davis. Sammy right there, but uh, the ball thrown perfectly, and it'll pick up the first down right at midfield. At the 50, hash right. Time remaining, 115 in the third. 21 to 10, the Aggies. Pole guy under center. They had movement. And there was movement on that play by Kyle Eaton, the left tackle. He was about three yards down the field, and there had not been a snap. It's the official website for the Aggies. Get the story from AggieAthletics.com. Shotgun again shown here by Pole Guy. Redshirt freshman has done a nice job today. They need to get to the Aggie 40. Has the snap. Has good protection. Has no one to throw to. Now he's going to move a man. They'll throw right up in the middle of the 40-yard line. Drops back to the 43. Coming back to this side is Gabe Lindsay. Now he dives for a first down across the 40. And out of bounds he goes at the 39. And a late flag will go down on the other side of the tackle. And apparently something against... Oklahoma State, according to Harold Robertson. I think it's another one of those personal fouls, a late hit, a cheap shot after the play. And this one should be a 15-yard variety that will move this one back. But uh, once again, Pogai with a lot of time to locate his receiver. Dead ball, personal foul, offense. First down by rule, 15-yard penalty, Oklahoma State. It's 10. They netted the uh, the first down, but then the personal foul after the play was whistled dead. Two wides to the left, one to the right, running back to the left of Pogai, waiting on the snap and the shotgun. Drops back to his 39, throws, and it's caught after a juggle for a first down across the 40, down to the Aggie 37-yard line. I think that may have been Wyatt again, or perhaps Fobbs on the reception. I think it was Bryant, Dave. I think it was a stop pattern to Bryant. Oh, Bryant. Ta- yeah, T.D. Bryant. He'll take it down inside the 40-yard line. That was good for 17 yards. Just a stop and a very nice throw by Pogai. Game good for a count. It was for Bryant who caught the ball. He had 17 ball, catches A&M. coming into the ball game. He had a hot game against CU, 6 for 75, first and 10. OSU with the uh, ball at the Aggie 37-yard line. Shotgun again for Pogai. Got White off to his right, waiting on the snap. The big freshman has it, sets himself, now throws, intercepted. It's Jason Glenn at the 30-yard line, threw it right into his hands. Jason Glenn is such a smart player. They tried the same play to the other side. Jason Glenn read it, moved right in front of T.D. Bryant, and he'll get the interception and turn it over for the Aggies. The Aggies will get the ball first and 10. Uh, Let's see where they're going to mark it, right at the 30. Seven seconds to go in the third. That's the second interception in as many weeks for Glenn. He had one against Kansas State last week. He gets one here today. Second interception turned in by the wrecking crew in this ball game. One right at the end of the first half by Sammy Davis, which was his.
Tim now has 16 interceptions for the year. First down and 10 for the Aggies. At their own 30 on what should be the last play of the third quarter. Goins in motion. Handoff goes to Toombs. He starts out to the right side, cuts it back to his left, and carries for three to the 33-yard line. And that will bring up a second down and seven coming up as we get the last play of the third quarter going to the fourth with 15 minutes to go. And the Aggies up in the ball game by a score of 21 to 10. This is the Texas Aggie Radio Network. And we're about ready to get the second to the uh, third, make it fourth quarter underway. And Dave's looking for something. And Dave, I think you've got it now. Here's second down coming up and seven from the Aggie 33. Play action. And here is a throw, and it's incomplete behind the intended receiver going. And as he was throwing, Ferris was knocked down big time by Jaquay Thomas. Here are your third quarter stats brought to you by University Bookstores of College Station. On the web, go to shopaggieland.com. First downs, uh, 21 for the Aggies, 13 for OSU. 170 yards rushing for the Aggies, 126 for OSU. Passing yards, 214 for A&M, 101 for the Cowboys. Total offense, 384 for A&M, 227 for OSU. Ferris has had a heck of a time today against this OSU defense. They have put a lot of pressure on this guy. He'll run this play from a shotgun. Line of scrimmage, the 33 on third down and seven. Drops back, sets up, now he throws, and that's Porter out to midfield. Porter caught it at about the 42-yard line and advances out to midfield, the 50. Ricklin Holmes around his waist, and Porter now has become a big factor in this ballgame today for Texas A&M. That just went 17 yards. What a great throw by Ferris. Ricklin Holmes all over Porter, but he threw it out in front of him, and Porter, with those great hands, is able to pull it in and keep the drive alive, and he moved just inside the 50-yard line. First down and 10 for Texas A&M at midfield. I formation. Four catches, 50 yards. Porter. Ferris under center has the snap. And he hands off. It goes to Weber. He'll bust out for about four yards as he makes his way down to the 46-yard line. A lead block by Toombs and Greg Richmond. A freshman redshirt on this Cowboy team who weighs in at 240 pounds. He is 6'2", made the stop on Joe Weber. So what the Aggies would like to do here with about 14 minutes left in the ballgame and an 11-point lead, they'd love to keep the ball on the ground, get some points, and chew up some of that clock. We have another injured A&M player. However, this one is standing up, and I can't get a number on him right now. We are waiting on maybe Tango McCauley. He yeah, is I think it is Tango. On his, his hands are on his knees, and he has bent over. The training staff out now to talk to him. Two wides to the left, one to the right, tight ends to the left. Motion from Goins coming left to right. Out of the shotgun, the inside handoff goes to Weber. Weber breaks it across the 45 and gets to the yard line. That was second and seven. Third and two will be coming up from the OSU 41-yard line. 13-34 to go in the ball game, and the Aggies are up 21-10 over Oklahoma State. a has got the ball. The Aggies are doing a good job here in the fourth quarter with that push up front. As a matter of fact, the whole second half, the offensive line has been winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. That time, it was just that same counter, and uh, Weber's able to pick up five yards right up the middle. Bethel Johnson on this side. You've got Chris Taylor over on the other side. Two tight ends on third down and about two. High formation. Deep pitch comes back to Weber. Hits the line. Bottled up. That'll go nowhere. Line of scrimmage, and that's it. He's trying to string it out here, Dave, to the right side. Oklahoma State was all over that. Yeah, they went to the, the toss. Waiting on the snap from Chance Pierce. He has it. It's a high punt. It's coming back to this sideline. The Aggies are getting down there, and that one's going to go into the end zone about a yard deep, and they'll bring it out to the 20. So it'll be first down and 10. For Oklahoma State at their own 20-yard line with 12.41 to go in the game. And the Aggies up by a score of 21 to 10 in the game. It's a 42-yard punt for Cody Skates. This broadcast brought to you in part by Sylvania Lighting. Look for quality Sylvania light bulbs wherever you shop. If you tuned in uh, just in the last few minutes, Robert Ferguson went out of the ball game and he hit the, the kicking net over on the far sideline, right at the, the far end of the Aggie uh, bench. And a Apparently has hurt a knee, has a sprained knee after hitting that uh, bar in that kicking net and will not return. Out of the shotgun, here we go, first down and 10. Poe guy steps up, now throws to the sideline, caught at the 29-yard line by Fobbs. Not enough for a first down. Sammy Davis pushes him out at the 29. 
Interceptions today for the ranking crew include one by Sammy Davis, who's fourth of the year, another by Jason Glenn that stopped a promising drive for OSU at the 30-yard line. It was his second in as many weeks. And Pogo, by Pogo at that time doing a good job of uh, avoiding the rush from Gerard Penwright, and he bought some extra time, and that's why he was able to, to find Jamal Fobbs on the sideline for the uh, nine-yard pickup. He'll move under center on second down and very short with a single setback behind him. As the snap, it's play action. He drops back to his 20. He's going to step up. Now he's going to run with the football, and after all is said and done, he got the uh, – now he's going to be fourth down. They're saying fourth down that – he did not get it, and he comes up limping a little bit. He was caught from the backside by Jason Glenn as he tried to run for it. Now they say first down for Oklahoma State. Yeah, he, he needed less than the length of the football and was able to pick up just about that much. First down and 10 at the 30-yard line, Oklahoma State's 30, with 12-10 showing on the clock remaining in the game. 21-10 A&M over Oklahoma State on first and 10. Bivin under center, puts a man in motion. And he hands off, and they'll go to Reggie White. White fights for five, and he gets five, maybe six yards. That guy has been tough all day long. Yeah, for White, that's going to be his 14th carry. He's got 93 yards, and that's that action. It's similar to what the Aggies do with Dwayne Goins. They bring a, a wide receiver in motion, and they have the option of either handing it off to the man, the receiver in motion, give it to the tailback Reggie White, or have the quarterback keep. That time, White picks up five, almost six, up the middle. 21 to 10 is your score. Texas A&M with the lead. Second down and about four will be needed. Shotgun for the replacement quarterback, Bivin. With a running back to his left, he hands off to... No, he camp it after a fake. He's out to the 45, and he lowers his head, and he runs over an Aggie at the 49-yard line. That was Sammy Davis that he hit head-on with Gerard Penright around his waist. I think also back there. Well, Davis and Penright with those two at the 49. Bivin carries first and 10. Oklahoma State with 11-20 remaining in the ball game and the Aggies up 21 to 10. This is nothing but a, a blind bootleg just a quarterback keep and whoever had responsibility for containment on this side was fooled by the play action. Two flankers on the right side split and left side. Left side's the short side. And the handoff will go to White. White hits the left side for about two from the 50. He will carry to about the Aggie 48. Sammy Davis came up to meet him along with Ron Edwards. Now Sammy Davis coming on the corner. Blitz came around the corner and got there quick enough to be the first man to uh, to hit White and uh, got help from uh, some other Aggies, and it'll only pick up two yards. Clock rolling down now to 10 minutes and now 38 seconds on a second down play for Oklahoma State. Rivers goes way out right to the right along with uh, Bryant. And you've got uh, Woods here as a split in on the left. Bryant goes in motion, single setback. And they have handed off on Bryant, who's the motion man, coming back to this side of the field. The Aggies read it and caught him back at the original line of scrimmage on this first and 10 series at the 49. A&M all over that one. So now third down and 10. Well, they've been using the same series this uh, th since uh, Bivens came into the ball game. This is the first time they've given it to the uh, motion man, and the Aggies were ready for that one, and they'll drop it for a loss. Big play here, third down. Ryan and Rivers go wide to the right side. Wood stays in on the left side. That's the short side of the formation. Shotgun for Bivin. The starter is out here at his left leg, dropping back to his 40. Bivin sets up, now throws the ball. He threw it low. It slipped out of his hands. It goes incomplete down around the Aggie 40-yard line. Now fourth down coming up at that same 10 from midfield. Well, it's it's really tough to come into a ball game like this. You haven't had a chance to throw since the half, and he came in ice cold, and that's the first his first pass attempt, and it was a bad throw. Went down into the turf, not anywhere near the receiver, and uh, Oklahoma State will be forced to punt, and I imagine Bivens will go to the sideline and start getting his arm warm. Mickey Jones and Taylor standing at the 20. Elders same in this one for this sideline. Good high spiral. Fair catch being called for by Taylor at the three-yard line. He took it, and he slaps the ball when he realizes where he caught the ball. We're backed up on our own. Actually, the four will be the spot where he took the fair catch. Well, when you're a punt, when you receive punts, you stand on the ten-yard line. You do not go back from there and make a fair catch. You'll never, you should never fair catch the ball inside the five. Make them down it there. 
But uh, Taylor lost uh, track of where he was, and he'll fair catch it at the four, and the Aggies are backed up. They need to get out of trouble here. He immediately dropped his head and slapped his free hand into the football that he was holding at his left hand. He was very upset with himself for having done what he just did. That's fair catch it at the four. Here comes the Aggie O back out on the field. And we'll go with uh, tight end here on the right side. That's Delatore. Play action, and we're going to throw deep, and we're going down the field, and it is incomplete at the 40-yard line. Bethel Johnson, the intended man, and he was going ahead up. Michael Cooper, and it goes incomplete at the 40. Threw that one from the end zone on first down and 10 at their own four for Texas A&M. Second and 10 from that same spot. 21-10 is your score. That stops the clock at 9.30 remaining in this ball game. Looks like Bethel will go to the sideline and talk to Larry Kirksey. And we'll have on this play, we'll have Chris Taylor and Mickey Jones in at wide receiver. And two tights. Bonnie Madison and Michael Delatore. Single set back with Ferris under center. Two flankers, one on each side of the ball. The handoff will go to Jamar Toombs. He breaks out from the four out to the 10-yard line. He'll pick up about six. It'll be a third down coming up and four needed by Texas A&M. Llewellyn Brown on that tackle. Sophomore out of White House, Texas. Another OSU player, Sean Barry, the defensive lineman, down on his back. Icon Office Solutions, a proud sponsor of Texas A&M Athletics, providing great service and great Canon copiers for the best in office technology. It is Icon. Aggies are at home next week against Oklahoma. That game kicks at 12 noon, and it is sold out. We have no tickets remaining for the OU game, which will be our final home game of this uh, 2000 season. Injured player is down at the 11-yard line for Oklahoma State. They're tending to him now. Week we'll talk about as we go through the rest of this ball game about the implications of ESPN game day comes to campus. Here's third down and four at the 10. Porter goes in motion right to left. Two wides in that direction. Rolling to his left. Back at the one. Now throwing it. Batted up in the air. Incomplete. Somebody got a hand on that for Oklahoma State. Jaquay Thomas was chasing Ferris into the end zone, and he threw it about a yard deep, and now we're going to have to punt the ball from our own end zone. Uh, that six-yard gain by Jer Jer uh, Jamar Toombs uh, is big now because it gives the Aggies just enough room to get this one out. Skates standing about midway in his own end zone, and he'll try to punt this one away. Gabe Lindsay, the return man, standing at the OSU 49 line of scrimmage is the 10. Skates. Midway in the uh, end zone. Here's the punt. Good high spiral. Dropping back to his 45. Lindsay at the 44. Starts the return. Got away from the man at the 50. Down the sideline. And he's breaking it back to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. And he just scored a touchdown. Number 11, Gabe Lindsay. Touchdown. Lindsay from about his own 45 yards. Line started on this side of the field and then a diagonal cut to the far side of the field from about the 20, and that makes it 21 to 16 before the extra point. It was 8:41, Dave, remaining in the ball game. Outstanding punt out of his own end zone by Cody Skates. You can't blame him. The coverage is down and uh, good blocking. He picked up a wall along the sideline, cut it back, and takes it into the end zone. I'm surprised that they're not going for two here. Aggies are chasing a man out on the field right now on their uh, extra point team. And now timeouts is going to be called by Oklahoma State. They'll call a timeout with 8.41 to go in the uh, ball game. And it's 21-16 before the extra point. This is Texas Aggie football. Out of the field. They're going for two. And now they're trying to get another man out on the field. They're waiting for him to get there. And Pogai has returned on this Extra point attempt, so they go for two to try to make it 21-18. to 18. 8.41 to go. Waiting on the snap, he has it. He's lofting one. They're going toward Fobbs and over his head, and it's incomplete on the two-point effort. So we'll hold it 21-16 to 16 with 8.41 the, with 8.41 remaining on the ball game. And this one is very much in doubt. It's anybody's game. Here's the kickoff, and they're going to put this one into the end zone. We'll take the knee and come out to the 20. Dwayne Goins goes back. And we'll take the knee, and out to the 20-yard line, it will come. Still not much wind, but what wind there is will be at the backs of Oklahoma State. The flag's a little bit limp, but blowing a little bit from the east to the west. Robert Ferguson out of the ball game with ice on his left knee. As a sprained knee, we were told earlier he would not be returning to the lineup. 
Here comes the Aggie offense, and they need to generate some offense right now. Jamar Toombs is the fullback, and Whitaker is the tailback. Got a tight end left. Now Whitaker went in motion on first down and 10 from the 20. Throw it over the middle, and it's caught. It'll be out to about the 28-yard line diving effort to the 29 by Chris Taylor. Taylor catches the ball and rolled down to the 29. So it's second down on the yard coming up. Quick slant to Taylor and an outstanding catch. The ball a little bit low. He went down on the turf, and he'll pick up, uh, boy, almost the first. He's about uh, half a yard short, second and a half a yard. Bethel Johnson checks out of the ball game. Here goes Taylor going left along with Mickey Jones. Tied in on uh, the other side of the formation. That will continue to be Lonnie Madison. High behind Ferris, and he puts Whitaker in motion again as he breaks the eye. The handoff goes to Toombs, and Toombs will carry for a first down to the two-yard line. So it'll be a first and ten for Texas A&M at their own 32 with 7.56 remaining in the ball game. And Texas A&M leading 21 to 16. They just got a punt return of 55 yards by Gabe Lindsay for a touchdown. That was the first time he has returned a punt for a touchdown this season. His longest punt return prior to the 55-yarder was 13. First down and 10 at the Aggie 32. Favors hash right. Porter in motion. Now a draw out of the backfield as they go to Whitaker. Hit head on as he hits the line of scrimmage and was lucky to get a couple of yards there as he carries to the 34-yard line. Terrence Robinson hit him head on. He's a sophomore out of Tyler, John Tyler. And Whitaker limping a little as he'll go to the sideline and Joe Weber will come in. That was the draw play, and it looked uh, like it had some possibilities, but uh, OSU closed on it quickly. Check Only picks on, up uh, two. Watch Whitaker's numbers right now, Dave. Yeah, Whitaker will have 10 carries for 76 yards, Dave. Second down and eight. Clock working down to seven minutes. Eye formation. Slot to the left. Tight ends covered up. Break the eye. Hand off, and it goes to Toombs. Toombs got two yards to the 36-yard line. Oklahoma State was waiting for him at the pass. Dwayne Levels ambushed him. Now a third down coming up, and the Aggies will need about six or seven. About six yards. Yeah, just not much there. They converged in the middle. Now the Aggies will probably try to throw for it here on third and about six. In a situation here, Dave, where you can't afford to make an offensive mistake. Shotgun for Ferris with a running back to his right. And that's Weber. Three wides on the left, one on the right. Drops back to the 29, sets up, throws the ball, and it will not, I don't know, we have to wait and see. Taylor caught it, and he's out around the 42, and it's going to be close for a first down. They're going to spot the ball looking to the other sideline. They're going to take it to that far side hash mark and spot it down at the 42, and that might be enough. They're going to give him the 42, and I think by about half the ball, Taylor just picked up a first down. Well, that was that quick slant and a good throw from Ferris. He was under some pressure, but they're going to have to measure for this one, Dave. Yeah, that's going to be close, oh, too. Oh, is it ever. Whitaker again, 10 carries and 76 yards in the ball game. Now what's Taylor done on his receptions? We're waiting to see what uh, the yards he picked up on that last one. That was a third down and six. Here come the chains. They will stretch it. I don't think we got it. Uh, he's going to be short by about uh, two inches. Didn't make it. Waiting on the snap. There it is. Little low. Containment. They had a man coming up the middle. Lindsay is asking for a fair catch, and he will take it at the 28-yard line. So at the 28, a fair catch off the foot of Cody Skates. And the punt that time will go some 30 yards. Jonte Buell with uh, excellent coverage and uh, forced uh, Lindsay to take the fair catch. Let's see who's going to come in for quarterback. It'll be Poe Guy. He's limping. No guy came in on that two-point after a moment ago on the incomplete pass. So he returns at quarterback after limping off, favoring the left leg. Has a single setback behind him. 5.53 remaining in the ball game. The Aggies up 21 to 16. First and 10 at their own 29. OSU out of the backfield goes to White. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Knocked down at the 29. It'll be second down. That same 10 coming up. Clock working now against Oklahoma State. As I said a moment ago, the offense is not the situation where they can afford a mistake. Same thing with the Aggie defense. Yeah, you got to be sure of your tackles. You've got to be sure of your coverages. And you just have to play mistake-free football. And that's how you win football games. Five minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the game. The clock working. Slot to the right. 
You have a flanker here on the left. Shotgun for Poe Guy to running back right to his left. He'll take the snap at his own 25. Has it. He drops back to the 20. Steps up. Now he's being chased, and he's going to be sacked from the backside as he goes down at the 27-yard line. He'll lose two on the sack made by Ty Warren. That'll be his fourth sack of the season. Ty Warren has been outstanding today. He's got he's, he's big, and he shows great movement. Uh, these first two plays, he's made the plays himself. The first tackle for no gain on White, and that sack of uh, Pogai that will lose about, uh, oh, two and a half, and it's going to set up this huge third and 12. They've got to get the ball out to their own 39-yard line. Three wides are going to the right side. They've got to tie it in here on the left side. Shotgun for Pogai, running back White to his left. Gamble moving some folks around to the defensive front. Has the snap. Throws it out in the flats on the screen to this side. Breaks out at the 30, 45, 40. He's out to midfield, and they've wrapped him up across the 50 at the 47-yard line. Tackle from the backside by Sean Weston, and that was... Must have been, uh, was it white again or was it five? It was white, and it was a it was a lead-saving tackle, and we've got Sammy Davis down back here at the 30-yard line. This it's first down and 10 at the 47-yard line. They're operating in Aggie territory. Oklahoma State inside a handoff. Now it's going to be Pogai on the keeper going around the right side, turns it downfield across the 40. He goes to the 38-yard line. It is Asso, Pogai, Brian Gamble, and Bonovich on the tackle. And he came up limping. He'll pick up about nine yards. That's just that blind bootleg where they fake it to the back up the middle and then the quarterback keeps it out to the right side unprotected. But it goes for nine yards once again. No containment on that side. Three minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the ball game. Second down in the yard. They've got the ball at the Aggie 38-yard line. Three wides on this side. Shotgun Pogai. He moves white from the right to the left. Out of the shotgun. They're going to call a timeout. Pogai has a running back to his left. Tight ends on the right. There's the snap. Inside fake on the hand. Now they're going to have a throw back and it'll be caught. And it's white and white. And a flag, a flag will go down now as uh, white got the first down. And I think there was a takedown against Texas A&M by one of the offensive linemen. I think that uh, they, they, they held, yeah, yeah, they held Jason Glenn. That's what kept this play from being a big loss. I think it's going to be holding against OSU and move them back. Yes, it will. Single setback, Pogai moves in under center, has the snap, and it's a draw out of the backfield as they go to White. White will get uh, about three yards to near the 45-yard line. And now they will face a third down coming up. They will need to get to the Aggie 37-yard line. They're going to need eight. Third and eight coming. Out onto the field comes Rivers. He'll bring the play in from the sideline. And they will take Jamal Fobbs out of the lineup. So now third down and eight. They need the Aggie 37. This is a big play. Shotgun for Pogai running back to his left. Slot left, split into the right. Waiting on the snap. He'll take it at the 50. Drops back. Has time. Now he's dancing around. Steps up. The Aggies had him for a moment. Now he's running to this side of the field. Cocking his arm. Throwing the ball out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Hit from the backside by Ty Warren as he was releasing the football. Well, and there was nobody there. He just threw it away so he wouldn't take the loss, and that's going to bring up a fourth down in about eight, and I'm sure that OSU will go for it here. We, we have another injured player, and that looks like Jason yeah, Glenn. It he is. is getting up. Oh, what's happened to him? He is, appears to be holding his stomach. May have had the breath knocked out of him. So now fourth down. We've got two minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the ball game. They're assisting Glenn off the field, the training staff, for Texas A&M. 2.30 to go in the game. 21-16 is our score. A&M leading Oklahoma State. This is a fourth down and eight. They've got uh, to get to the Aggie. They need to net the Aggie 37-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the Aggie 45. Three wides on the left. Running back to the left of Pogai. Waiting on the snap at the 50. On fourth down at the 45. Drops back. He's cocking his arm. He throws, and it's going to be caught, and that will be a first down down to the 26-yard line caught by Rashawn Woods. Woods caught it and then got a yard more to the 26-and-a-half. First and 10, Oklahoma State, 223 remaining in the game. 21-16, to Texas A&M over Oklahoma State in this game. That pass just went for 19 yards, Dave. All right, the Aggies elected to go with a three-man rush in the zone coverage and too much time to throw, and Woods found uh, a spot, an open spot in the zone. Good delivery by Pogai. Two wides on the right, one on the left is a split in. The two on the right are flankers. 
And it's an inside handoff as it goes to White. White has the 20. He has the 17-yard line. He will be close for a first down. Gain of nine. Nine yards on the carry by Reggie White. He's well over 100 yards rushing the ball. 18 carries, 110 yards for White now. Second and one. Second down and a yard. Clock working against Oklahoma State. 145 ball game. They have no way to stop it. Seconds and a yard at the Aggie 17-yard line. Under center goes Pogai. Two wides on the right. Puts one in motion coming back to this side. And he hands off and it goes to White. White has a first down at the 15. They'll stop the clock to move the chains with 126 remaining in the ball game. Ron Edwards got White on the tackle at the 15. It's first down and 10. Oklahoma State, they are working on the Aggie wrecking crew. Here comes uh, Terrence Davis Bryant into the ball game. Coming out will be Ron. That's Brian Blackwood. Oh, guy looking to the sideline, Dave, for the call. And the clock running at 114, 113. Now down to 110. Before shotgun, three wides on the right, one on the left, running back to the right of Pogai. Down to three on the 25 second clock. Now they, uh, AM took a timeout with a second on the 25 second clock. Hey, Cowboy fans, do you think Gallagher Ivor Arena was so. Aggies took a timeout with one second on the 25-second clock to think things over. First down and 10, Oklahoma State. An I formation behind Pogai. Waiting on the snap. Has it. Drops back. Lofting one. They're going sideline. And it is incomplete. In and out of the hands of Marcellus Rivers trying to on go the to, sideline. Trying to go to the big tight end. He had help from, uh, or Weston was back there with him. He had help from Jamison. The ball got into his hands, but they stripped it loose. Second down. 56 seconds to go. They stopped the clock on the incomplete. Marcellus Rivers is 6-4. That was Jamison uh, defending against him at 5-11. Rivers coming to this side. Over on the far side, the wide out is Rashawn Woods. Slot in that direction. Out of the shotgun. They are trying to set up a pass over the middle. Now Pogai running. Now he's going to throw one. He's going to throw it into the sideline. Matter of fact, he threw it into the stands, and a flag goes down at about the 12-yard line after the pass was thrown. Incomplete flag down. Ineligible downfield against Oklahoma State. Shotgun for Pogai. The running back is to his left. Shouting an audible. Waiting on the snap. He has it. He's stepping up to throw. He will. And it is almost intercepted by AM. It goes incomplete at the five yard line. Wes Bodovich reached in and had it, and then it came out. Rashawn Woods was the intended receiver. He ran the hook route. Remember, they, they, they can get a first down without uh, I mean, scoring the touchdown. Well, but, they can, but they've only got one down to do it. It's fourth down. Here's the biggest play of the game. They bring uh, Bryant back into the ball game. Checking out will be Blackwood, the tight end. The Aggies make a change. Harold Robertson goes to the sideline. Fourth down and ten. They get the five and are tackled inside the five. It's a first down. They've got three stacked on the right. One split in left, snap the ball, drop back. He's going sideline. He's got Marcellus Rivers, and it is no incomplete. Good. He's out of bounds. He caught the ball out of bounds. It is incomplete. Fell out of bounds and called out of bounds by the official who was right on the spot. So the Aggies have dodged a bullet here at Lewis Field in Stillwater, 21 to 16. They've got 37 seconds to run off the clock. There's, oh, there's a flag, a flag down. down. Catch the flag back at the 18-yard uh, line. Flag picked being it up. picked up. Wow. Here's John Laurie. <laughs> celebration, Texas A&M. Half the distance penalty, Texas A&M's ball, first down. Okay. Marcellus Rivers jumped up, brought the ball in, had the ball in his grasp, and then fell out of bounds. And the official right there said, no, you weren't in bounds, and it's incomplete. And the Aggies have 37 seconds to run off the clock. Oklahoma State's out of timeouts. Ferris will move under center, take the snap, go down on the knee. Clock starts, and let's see when they roll the 35-second clock. Of the 25-second clock, and apparently they are nuts. That'll be it. They won't have to snap it again. Well, down to 20 now. Let's see if they got it rolled yet. And they're going to pick it up, and they're going to take it off the field. 
What are they doing with the ball? They're leaving. It's over. Officials have picked it up, and they are walking off the field. There go the officials. And they're going to the locker room. We still had about 18 seconds left on the clock, and they say that no way to stop it, so that's the ball game. And the Aggies have dodged a bullet. Or right here at the end. And it was a matter of inches on Marcellus Rivers leaping up, bringing the ball in, and then falling out of bounds. And the official right there on the spot said, no, you're out of bounds. It's incomplete. That was a fourth down play. And the ball on downs went over to Texas A&M, and that's the way it ended. 21-16. to The Aggies win it over Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State drops back to 2-6. and They have lost six in a row. They are 0-5 in the Big 12. Meanwhile, the Aggies will now go 7-2 and two and 4-1 and one in the Big 12. And they they have were a very meeting. fortunate to win the game. Oklahoma State did a great job. They were well prepared. Their team played very hard. Uh, we made uh, some mistakes in the ball game, particularly in the kicking game there in the second half. But uh, I give a lot of credit for them. They played very hard in the ball game. I was concerned before the game because I've seen them as an improving football team going into this game. The second half last week, they played a real good half of football. And and I figured going back home that they would we'd get a real good effort from them, and we did. Do you think there was any case of looking ahead of next week by your team? No, I don't think so. You know, I, I, you know, we, we anticipated that it would be about like it was out there today. Not Maybe not quite that close, but every time we played, I've been up here, I guess this is the third time. It's been about like this uh, every time we've been here. Coach, can you talk about your defense making that stand there? You had Sammy went out for a little bit. We had some guys, Terrence Keel didn't play, and Roland Bradley uh, didn't play. And, the, the, you know, we had some errors that that, uh, that were obvious to me uh, in losing two defensive starters, two key players didn't play in the game today. So I, I was pleased that our defense hung in there at the end and did what they had to do to win the ball game. Describe what you saw in the last play from, from your angle. Uh, which, which, which last play? play? The last offensive play for Oklahoma State. Oh, I, I couldn't see it from where I was. I, I didn't have a good view. I, you know, I was all the way across the field, and I couldn't see. They had some guys right there close to it, though. And you know, you get in those calls just like we had one in the first half right out here, and I couldn't see it very well either. <clears throat> Don't know. He's got uh, some type of knee injury. Don't know how severe it is at this time. What was the timeout for there as late uh, on defense? Right at the end. Yeah. I, I just wanted to settle our guys down and. Uh, just try to settle, settle them down and then, you know, try to get control of the situation. Talk about playing the number one team in the country next week. Uh, an exciting time, I'm sure. Yeah, it is. That's a great challenge for us. Uh, I've seen just a little bit of, of uh, OU, and uh, they are on a roll. They've had a fantastic season. They've got a great quarterback, great, great, great everything. They're a complete football team, and uh, that's a great challenge for us. You guys have some history of playing well in College Station versus number one ranked teams or highly ranked teams. You'll use that again as motivation, I'm sure. Well, I, I hope this week that we can go to work. We've got a great challenge, you know, and uh, I think if you look at how we played today, we've got a lot of work to do before we play the number one team in the country. So uh, we'll go back and go to work and uh, hopefully uh, try to get up for the challenge for next week. Can you talk about your offensive production in the third period? It seemed like you really took control of the game there. We came out, uh, felt good. We took the first two drives down for scores, and uh, we'd had a drive early in the game and fumble the ball down on the goal line and uh, had missed a score there. So we felt like we had some things we could do, and I was pleased that we did come back and uh, went down the field and got control of the game if we play the kicking game. And we, we, we let them with the field of the punt on the three and uh, then turned around and let them run the punt back. Uh, it was really uh, bad, bad on our part, great on their part. You guys had built up some momentum with the last two weeks in particular playing so well and to struggle uh, today. Do you think that slows the momentum or is just, does, does hanging on at the end um, negate that? How, how do you think that carries well, over next week? In college football today, anytime you can go on the road in a conference game and win, the bottom line, you got to be pleased with that. And there's a whole lot to build upon. Uh, anytime you can go on the road and win in, in a major conference, which we're in. And, uh, this team, you look out there today, they're a very physical team. They're big, got a big physical quarterback. And, uh, you know, we, uh, one of the real misunderstandings, I think, of college football is everybody has teams in slots. You know, where this team's good, this team's bad. You look at those teams out there, they all look about the same. So on a given day, one makes some plays and one doesn't. And, 
they end up being usually on a given day one team can 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 have a chance to really play really well. And this team today played well against us. Ladies and gentlemen, now forming at the west end of Lewis Field, the nationally famous Fighting Texas Aggie Band. Texas Aggie Band sounds off to the stirring strains of their famous fight song, The Texas Aggie War Hymn. corridor of our nation's military history as the Texas Aggie Band presents their own rendition of the Patton theme. King's famous march, the Trombone King. of the Green Beret.
band sounds off to their signature march, the Noble Men of Kyle. member Block T. Ladies and gentlemen, before you on the playing field is the pulse of the spirit of Aggieland, the 2000-2001, the Fighting Texas Aggie Band.